grain. Podcast. Rub Vaseline on the lens. Patreon. Spike Young sucks bad. Left wing politics. Wes Anderson sucks. Wes Anderson. You are a creative. We get it. What? No Q&A? James Gray sucks. As a filmmaker, he is nothing. A zero. He's a, a pig piece of shit. I was right. obsessed with trash. The movie's trash, you know? I, I go mentally ill. Never make a movie. Let the creative people talk to the money people. We watch a Moon Girl. Josh Sasson. Joe Schmo did the fucking food. This is a film. M. Night Shalaman. I'm crazy about sound. Steven Soderbergh's song is anyway. Instagram. Doritos bags with mad different. I'm a straight up slut. Make out with girls. Spike Young sucks bad. There's a whole group of guys who pretend to be making special films. Let's do it. Here we are. Here we are. Noah we're Dillon. The, we're on, in the Ion Pad. Noah Dillon's on the Ion Couch. Noah Dillon, photographer, musician, from the band Help. Biochemist. I've been hearing about you a lot, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're talking of the town. I've heard a lot of stories. <laughs> can, you, can you open with one? Yeah. <laughs> I heard that you made a movie in the Chateau Marmont with Luca. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good place to start, that's a, right? It's <laughs> a very good place to start. Um, yeah, maybe, so basically, I am all those things. Yeah. I'm an extraordinary talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just virtuosic. I, you know, they call me once in a generation artist. It's pretty, it's overwhelming feeling. But it's know. just you and Lucian Smith. It's just me and Lucian. Yeah. Lucian and I were actually talking about well. this the other night. We were at Clandestino, <laughs> and uh, it was after one of my shows actually, and. He said he was going to knock my friend out uh, if he showed up, so. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> but, uh, no, so basically, Luca and I, Luca Sapat, um, he, he hit me up, and he's been hanging out a lot with Duke, Duke Nicholson, if you're not familiar, uh, I'm sure you are, but he, he's been hanging out a lot with him, and they have, like, a home. They have been, they have been living at Chateau at that point, and it was quarantine so he said well, why not I'm gonna make a movie and I'm like oh, fuck I kind of wanted to make a movie with you but instead you're gonna make a movie with Duke <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's fine he's like why not uh, but anyway yeah so he him and Duke wrote a movie in like two days just sitting out back at the Chateau pool and then he brought me on to be like cinematographer and but you know how that goes like what it's Luca and I and Duke uh, so we ended up all kind of like directing it together practically and like, you know, we got Charlotte D'Alessio as the lead. I don't know how much people know about it. it was Charlotte D'Alessio is like the lead and Duke and Luca are also the co-leads. And we, Andre Balaz, the guy who owns Chateau Marmont and the, all those other hotels, he okayed the whole thing. And we got like George, George Quintana, George? I forget his name. We should know about George. He's like a legendary stylist. He styled it. We got like a bunch of Hedy Sleen, et cetera, et cetera, and kind of just they wrote this random script and we shut down Chateau for a week and we shot it out and they, they, they <laughs> it's, it's so funny because half of the time, how does a Luca, like he has a lot of friends, right? And especially yeah. in LA, people are very bored and they have nothing to do. So it would just be like Addison Ray behind my shoulder, like <laughs> looking at the monitor, like, yeah, that shot looks really good. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, like, yeah, it kind of looks good. Like, do you think I should like, like, <laughs> or like, you know? So it was fun, but it's never coming out. Yeah, is it? Well, will it exist? Does it exist? I mean, it, I saw Luke at a party like two months ago, and he was like, "God, oh, you want to like finish that movie?" I'm like, "Yeah, but it's not gonna happen." So there's, Ever. there's, there's you half, have no compulsion to it. No, no compulsion. It's we have half a movie shot at Chateau Marmont, which is ridiculous because if you want to shoot, there's only been about like four movies shot at Chateau. Yeah, and the most recent one somewhere. was the the Coppola, yeah, Coppola yeah. movie exactly. And you know that's I think it was I cannot remember the exact figure, but I know it was like a 
like a, like almost a couple million just to use Chateau, you know? Even, I was about to say, even it's, like, though it's, it's a hard location to get. Yeah, exactly. So I think it was we kind of underutilized it. <laughs> we, should, we, should, we should have done like a horror movie there, or something. but instead we, it's like a, instead it's like Buffalo '66 meets like uh, apathetic trust fund kids. That sounds great. Sounds hard, Which I, honestly, saying that out loud is probably the best possible way. That yeah, we you really that. sold me. Drop it. <laughs> yeah, we shot on film, you know, because that's oh, what man. that's what filmmakers do. Yeah, it is. We shoot on We're film. We're all about the grain. No, you gotta you gotta drop it. We shot it. We shoot on 16 millimeter film, you know, from Kodak. I've heard yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. It's good shit. <laughs> I don't know. It was, it, was, it was fun. That's what we shoot these pods on. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 16, baby. Damn, y'all got a full crew. Yeah. You guys you guys at home wouldn't believe this, but there's like full sound. Like there's an We're moving audio to 35 engineer in the back. Soon. <laughs> really? 35 millimeter, yeah. Uh, well, uh, Big shout out to Ann Hubble over at the Kodak Long Island City Labs. <laughs> you know your shit. You, you, I, bet, I bet you went to NYU. You little, t- did, you little did, Tish school not. boy. No, we went to the same school. Really? Yeah. Pratt, go. Parsons. We can say it. We said it before. Oh, yeah, we said it before. Sarah Lawrence. Oh, that's, not, that's good for you guys. That's, that's good school. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, good that's, that's the reaction I want. Good yeah. for you guys. Yeah, I love Sarah Lawrence. I went to a very shitty uh, hybrid liberal arts school in Colorado and you know slacklining was uh, a major there yeah. oh yeah wait what school Fort Lewis College it's in the four corners it's very small a lot of people like to go there kind of the yuppie Patagonia esque right. moderate trust funders who couldn't make it into Sea Boulder right yeah. um, I was living in my car at the time in Colorado so then I was like I need to go to college probably because I have no future in my car, and so I I decided to enroll there, and then, <laughs> and then realized that I want to be an artist. I don't know who Ann Hubble is because I know my shit. I know it because she shafted me. Really? She pulled a deal on me. How right. so? Yeah. She made me think. I was shooting a movie, and she made me think that it was gonna be uh, a good idea for us to shoot on film, which I also thought was a very good idea. It always sounds good when you're thinking about it. We're you gonna know. give you a deal. Do you remember who told you from day one that it was a bad idea? This guy right here. Yep. See, this man knows that digital is the now, and mm-hmm. therefore we should be using the current medium of our time. <laughs> oh so, yeah. We're so obsessed. No. With, we're so obsessed with nostalgia. Like, what's exactly. the point? Why? Like, you shot on film, bro. <laughs> 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 the fuck are you talking about? No, well, I, when you're in the let, chateau, it makes sense. Yeah. That, but also, let me just say that uh, the name Nicholson carries heavy weight at Kodak. Oh, yeah. Of yeah, course. true, true, true. No, it just, I, it, I got scared because we visited, they opened up this Long Island City lab and it said like, like uh, you know, like upcoming projects and it just said the name of our movie and nothing else. I was like, yo, do you have anything else like going on? They're like, no, it's just you. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that doesn't look good to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but I agree. Like digital filmmaking is like a, a new thing and like offers different things. And I was talking about this the other day with, um, I had some meeting, uh, but it's just like I when I first started getting into photography, it's you look at like Magnum photos, right? Mm-hmm. And but well, you well, first you get into all the OGs, and it's all film, of course. So you want you get your thirty five millimeter camera and you click away. But then you look at the Magnum photographers, and you wonder why they're all shooting very sterile digital. And it's like well, you could do Stephen Musil lighting, you could do da 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 da. And I just realized that the Magnum photographers. Of course, because they're Magnum photographers, they're genius at what they do. They understand that having lighting like Stephen Measel, et cetera, where all those photographers shooting in, they're shooting in a fashion space, they're shooting in a commodified space. So dramatic lighting is uh, is a specific facet of commodification yeah. of the, the genre. So when we all want to make things look pretty, you know, whatever, it's, so it catches your eye and we can sell something, but to actually be a documentarian, which is what photography is, if you want to make a, if you want to be anything more than a documentarian, make a fucking movie. Yeah. You know, to be, in my opinion. So I think that, to go back to your point, that we should all be shooting very sterile digital. I just shot, it reminds me, I just shot uh, Nicolas Cage for some magazine cover in Vegas like two, three weeks ago. And film or digital? Digital. Yeah. It's, See? Yeah, you're trying to you're, trying, you're trying to catch me slipping. <laughs> <laughs> like, this man's on, this he's, man's on me. He's only slipping at the at the chateau. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is enticing. You know, it's like junk food. You right, see yeah. film and you're like, man, I just I could do that. And then you, it's like you know, going to McDonald's at midnight. You're like, I'm doing this, and it's just yeah, like, it looks so it looks so good. 
And then you re- as soon as you put as soon as you put as soon as you put the oatmeal. I mean, I only order ice cream cones and oatmeal at McDonald's. <laughs> as soon as you put that in your mouth, you you, you yeah, you want to kill yourself. Um, but anyway, I shot them on digital. But the magazine was expecting me to shoot a little bit. I just did a fashion story for them like a couple months ago, and it was a lot more. It's a fashion story. We're selling clothing. We're selling extreme. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Whatever. So they were expecting that sort of lighting, but it turned into me pulling up with like, I wanted a shot with like a, specifically a soccer mom DSLR, because I, you know, soccer moms have one of those DSLRs that their kids game that's just a little too big, mm. and they hold the lens like this, you know, <laughs> instead of that way, so you know they're a soccer mom, they're yeah, like, right, 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 right. you know, that's what I wanted it to look like. I wanted it to look like, you know, I'm just like shooting, or I love the behind the scenes photos of a lot of Beyonce music videos. There's a specific era in like 08, 09 where she is just shot behind the scenes with like a choreographer in these weird sort of hotel rooms or like office spaces and they're yeah. very bland and she's like kind of smiling and there's like security kind of and they're in these weird positions that you would only dream of coming up with if you were like, a, like an artist like, oh, I'm spa- like Tarkovsky right. spacing them out in yeah, weird yeah. ways. And it's just shot so simply and I'm like, I'm going to do that for Nicolas Cage because he's Nicolas Cage and yeah. like, why would I give him this lighting? So I did that. The magazine freaked out. They said there was, uh, they said there was a lot more to be desired than what I gave them. However, I think it's good. I, I, <laughs> I, did, I, had, him do the, I had him do a monologue to basically what I wanted is for my band, the band that I'm in, uh, I wanted to open every show with this video of Nicolas Cage being, you know the, you know the 16 millimeter of John Waters being like, I'm John Waters and yeah. you're in the theater right now with a cigarette. Yeah, 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 probably yeah, wanna, yeah, yeah. I wanted to do basically that, but with Nicolas Cage being like, you're at a help show, I'm Nicolas Cage. And I bet right now you want to fucking whatever, be on your phone, some dumb, whatever he wanted, yeah. that, yeah. that uh, paradigm. But I became too afraid because in the beginning of the shoot, I, I always wear sunglasses. I, I was, was going to wear sunglasses to this interview, but I realized that, that obviously that would just be way too much. And <laughs> people are already going to hate me. I know people are going to hate me. They always do. So I want to at least m- mitigate that a little bit. But I was wearing these sunglasses, and I like walk up and get into his suite, and he's like, He's like, oh, no, very good to meet you. I shake his hand. I still have sunglasses on. Everybody's looking at me aghast. Like, why would you greet Nicolas Cage in sunglasses and your <laughs> tight little, like, tight little jeans and whatever. And then he just keeps looking at me and he's like, I really like those sunglasses. I think I might have to wear them. I'm like, yeah, you're totally more than welcome. Little, you know, the Dolce and Gabbana, fake Dolce and Gabbana the, <laughs> that Chandler got from, like, Bayi. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I let him wear him, and he was re- he's like, I really want to steal your energy. I'm like, yeah, you can have it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say no, you can't have it. So day goes along, and he starts getting more and more restless because it's like a 13-hour shoot day. It's in Vegas. It's 116 degrees both days. We get to the last shot. I have my friend Skyler, uh, who lives in Las Vegas. He's like a car guy. He has a whole garage of cars. Bring this. 1970s Chevrolet lifted truck as I wanted to shot at the gas station with it was him and his wife as well he's dating he's married to this very young Asian woman who speaks probably 13% English or less I would say and I wanted to shot him at the gas station uh, whatever and they were throwing a fit and it was 116 degrees we pulled up to the gas station and there's just crackheads everywhere and <laughs> it's like the desert crackheads yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean they're built completely differently than anybody in Los yeah. Angeles they're so, strong yeah yeah they're just, they're not even, they probably are strong. I mean, they can I don't endure. know. Well, it's always, yeah, every time I'm in the desert, there's like tweakers like walking down the highway. Yeah, like, what like, are you doing? In the sun. I'm like, yeah, exactly. how are you doing this? They're strong. Meth. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Meth and yeah. heat just does something to the synapses. Right. Um, but anyway, he gets out of the suburban. Well, we were taking, he was we were going around in a limo the rest of the day, but for some reason, he just randomly had a suburban and then. He gets out, all these crackheads just looking at him. They're like, that's Nicolas Cage. <laughs> that's, they know they know who he is. We know who he is. He knows who they are. And they're just in this stare down. <laughs> it's literally like, like 15 crackheads, I swear. And they're just looking at him. <laughs> it was so bad. And then I have him do the shot, and I only get a couple clicks off, and it's an hour before the lighting I wanted. And then he, my st- stylist, uh, Sophia, she put him in these boots that were very hard to get on and the, sh- the shot is wrapped and he's sitting Nicholas, I look over I'm like standing there I'm so hot it's 116 yeah. I look over and it's Nicholas Cage and this Sophia the stylist she is this torpy little girl she's so thin 
She's like the thinnest girl you'll ever see. She's like looks like a cancer patient half the time. <laughs> she's she's cute, obviously. Like she's very she's very attractive, but she is also a little twerp. And she's this tiny little <laughs> stick arm girl, and she's yanking on Nicolas Cage's leg. She's like yanking as hard as she can. And he's and he's laying and he's sitting back and there's this whole team around him. There's just like this den of foxes who follow him wherever he goes right. he's a fucking A-lister and what else would you do and she's yanking on his feet and he's going ah ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> and I'm like holy shit I'm gonna take a photo of this obviously uh, I take a couple I run over and like I'm not even that close I'm like still 20 feet away take a couple of photos and like dip to the side and I didn't hear this part but he tells Sevilla he like, stops and he's like did he know just take a photo of me? And she's like, I don't know. And he says, that little shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he yells at this PR woman and the PR woman runs around the truck. She's like, this, I don't know if I should be saying this, um, <laughs> but the, I, I, I guess I can say it because it doesn't, it only shows bad and it's a poor taste to me. I show up to the shoot right after I, I shake his hand with uh, sunglasses on. He's already kind of weirded out. I guess he may have liked that. I go to his PR and she's this woman. Uh, I won't give any description on this woman, but let's just say at the end of the story, you will see why this may be a problem. Um, <laughs> I, I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, it's like an old Held Her Vices t-shirt from it's like Gianni Mora's brand, my friend. Very old. And it's this picture. <laughs> this girl really hates me, Alana Champion, because uh, I put her on a billboard. Luke and I put her on a billboard and she hates us because of it. But um, it's this picture of her in like one of those seaweed black black face masks, like skincare, whatever. I've and seen but this. it's yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's really it's really faded, so it's not that stark. And I was going to wear this this uh, tank top that says "God to your cum," and everybody was like, "You can't wear that. That's Nicolas Cage." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, fine. I'll wear the the Alana Champion T-shirt because that's all I had." The PR woman <laughs> looks at me and she says, "Is that a girl in blackface on your T-shirt?" <laughs> and uh, I think you can understand this woman is black at this point, and it's oh, I I, I'm wearing black face. I'm wearing black face, <laughs> like pretty much is black face. But I and I'm like, yeah, and so just not not on the right foot. But anyway. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I'm surprised he honestly did any of the shots. They said no to some, but I had him do this monologue. I'm like, give me a monologue of anything about Las Vegas. You can do. I gave him like some keywords, and he took none of them, and <laughs> except for the Las Vegas keyword. And he's we're like in this penthouse, and he's overlooking the city and I'm having I always wanted to start a movie with a character walking into frame and leaning into a fan uh, like a normal whatever fan you know, an AC fan not an AC fan you know standalone fan yeah. and like, walk into it and they give like this very uh, very composed reflective but also didactic monologue and it distorts their voice and so mm -hmm. I was like I'm gonna have Nicolas Cage do this instead. I'm never gonna actually make a movie. No one's gonna give me the funding. We all know, like, it's not yeah. gonna happen. So I'm just gonna, do, I'm just gonna use this idea here, and I do, and I'm gonna lean into this fan, and he goes off. It's amazing. It's an incredible model. He's talking, he's talking about Las Vegas, and he's like, it basically wraps up with all the lights in the world right here on the strip. Like, <laughs> ridiculous. It's, you can tell he's good at his job. So yeah, um, I would hire yeah. him. Again. Well, where is that? Why didn't you open the show with that last night? <clears throat> Um, I mean, that is a good question. My answer to that is I drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> drop the ball a lot of video content. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we dropped the ball on the show last night. I dropped the ball, to be honest. I, don't on think a so. I, thought, it was, I thought it was a great show. Well, thank, thank you very much. We heard it was a legendary show. It, it was a legendary night. The streets are buzzing. Yeah, yeah. they are, actually. I saw uh, Lucian Smith tweet about it. I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. Oh, well, the only PR we have from that show, we wanted, we're on like a label now, um, and we don't really have any PR still though, somehow. We don't have any, we don't, like I wanted like a T Magazine culture section, like when yeah. E2 Moore got the write up. But the only thing we have is I DM Sam Hine <laughs> about the show yesterday, and he, <laughs> he responded, and he's like, oh, I'm actually out of town, and but I would have loved to come, but I've been bumping SSX lately. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, he's listening to a song. But I sent him the new EP or whatever. My friend Adams 
screen grab that and then put it on a t-shirt and was wearing that t-shirt all night so yeah. when anybody was like is there any press we can talk to i would just be like there and like people would go and read the dm on his t-shirt i'm like i mean that seems like a coast like a gq cosign seems pretty good to me i saw yeah. a sam hein l elmhoff t-shirt that... oh there also was a sam hein yeah, l elmhoff t-shirt that's what that's that was courtesy of adam adam shaw it's pretty sick shout out to adam yeah shout out adam shaw the the mythic man of the East Village, West Village. I don't know. I don't know where I am. Wait, rewind to Eddie, Eddie and Celine for a second. That was involved in the film, or what was? What did you say about Celine, Eddie, Celine? You, oh, we uh, Eddie um, let us pull a bunch of like uh, off runway Celine pieces. Oh, for the film. Yeah, it was. Cool. It was. It was very like classic old school chateau, of course. You yeah. Know? And Charlotte D'Alessio is a very everyday beauty girl. You know, anybody, yeah. any man can look at her and be like, oh wow, I, I want her. So. Uh, she, you know, she's in full Celine, and Duke was Duke was in full Celine mostly, and we never even filmed Luca's part to be honest. But <laughs> you got you got to drop this. You got to do something with it. Just drop the. Incomplete I've never project. seen I've never seen any of the footage. Oh, There's only okay. three people who've seen the footage. Luca, some I don't. Luca, Duke, and my friend Ben, who transcoded the footage, and he and I asked Ben, I'm like, how does it look? Because I DP mo like I yeah. Had yeah. most of it, and he's like, yeah, it looked really good. I don't, like, I don't know about the story. It seemed like unfinished. I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> he, he said that he said that the footage looked good. So honestly, I bet, I bet, I bet Luca and Duke would be down to like you guys like an exclusive. Like, oh yeah, if we gave you, we should, we should just screen. <laughs> Actually, uh, what if we just screen? purely the transcoded footage like three yeah. hours of that yeah like a film. durational just piece you should, un yeah, we should do that at the la event that's a cool idea. honestly honestly yeah, i will like talk that. to them but i think that yeah. would be amazing three yeah. hours of just bullshit yeah, yeah that's the warhol shit just screen the yeah. footage that, that's it that's warhol. what you shot it yeah that's, uh, that's what we're doing here you yeah right now yeah. it's an unbroken shot yeah. bro no one wanted me on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> no we were people were no, asking people, yeah, to have you on for like over a year Really? Yeah. Even the Ion Discord was buzzing about the show last night. I mean, I have a lot of burner accounts, so I mean, that could have been me. <laughs> it, actually, you actually realized it was you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but um, we have somebody very special, somebody I care very deeply about. Yeah. Oh yeah. And somebody who means a lot to me. Um, they've been in my life for a while, and uh, I think it's time that they come to the forefront of uh, what I'm doing here today. So. All right, we, want to, we want to bring him in. Chandler we need Lucy him. Is, we fucking Chandler need him. Chandler Lucy's coming into the What pot. the fuck? Were you here the whole time, Hi. bro? Oh, bro, where did you come from? Hey. <laughs> hey, guys. He's been beamed in. I've been beamed in. I've been beamed in. What's yes. going on, guys? How we doing? All right, now we got Chandler on the couch. Damn. I'm here. Chandler Welcome. Here. Yeah, I, I want to check your guys' frame real quick. Yeah, true. And we can check the frame. Um, so you guys are in New York. You're here to do that. Last night was the first help show of a few. It was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't, um, I can't yeah, okay, yeah, first of all, speaking of how you guys look, let's just say our appreciation for you guys wearing tight pants because we're the, we're the two yeah, tight we, pants. We really, uh, like we were the, we've been kind of been yeah. the only two guys holding that down in New yeah, York people don't for the understand past what we're 15 doing. years. Oh, God. And <laughs> now God. we're 50. Yeah. And <laughs> 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 we're like, oh, there's two guys like us in LA. Yeah. This is so far. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just turned 37 recently. and um, How does that feel? <laughs> I mean, wait till you hit forty, bro. The, mo yeah. <laughs> the modern modern medicine is great, especially living in LA. There's a lot of cryo sculpting and things I've been into lately. With yeah, that. what work have you guys had done? Uh, <laughs> I got, I mean, I got full facial reconstructive surgery, like I've always wanted. Right. As soon as we got signed, I used my advance for that, and mm -hmm. uh, Chandler used his for these platforms on his vans. Believe it, <laughs> believe it or not, those are like five thousand dollars to put those platforms on. <laughs> Inside is the unreleased Wu Tang CD. <laughs> Scrully, yeah. Scr Scrully's very, coming very, on very, next very week. Very oh yeah, yeah. We've Martin been, Scrully, big shout out to yeah. Martin Scrully. Yeah, who, who yeah. thinks funding this whole operation? No, big, <laughs> absolute big shout out to Martin Scrully. I think he's the, one of the most poorly represented people like in the entire world. He's very misunderstood. He I will. I want to preface this conversation with the fact that this is the happiest conversation I think that anybody's had of us. If anybody knows Chandler and I. Our other <laughs> interviews is literally like just centered around suicide. So I like right. the uplifting. No, we just, yeah, that's why we asked about. Have you guys fuck with the Adrenochrome? That's what you guys have been. That's what's keeping you guys looking. First of all, way. Adrenochrome yeah. is a myth. If you knew anything, it's, it's like real. It's real. It's so real. It's so real. Chandler thought it was real. Don't blow yeah, the spot. Yeah, yeah. Do not blow the spot. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, so other interviews you're talking about suicide because that's what you choose to bring up, or because like it's just like. I mean, I've just been historically depressed because I'm a bitch. Yeah. Uh, Do you not generally our, like doing interviews? No, the, our other our other few interviews were just done by like random. I, I guess fans, you know, people, yeah. young kids who were colleagues and such, and. Uh, they're, they're just like, the two interviews was one is in a fucking CVS, which I think is deleted now on YouTube. Yeah, I can't believe they deleted. It had like 10,000 views. So anyone who saw any help video, they just saw us being fucking what? Like, they're in aisle 16, the candy aisle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just like with shitty, you know, iPhone mics and, the, and we're saying stupid things. And the other one was with another person who was actually friends with the other kid who interviewed us prior. And he just came over to our uh, old apartment on a Kingsley block. Uh, shout out North Kingsley. Shout out that apartment, which was absolutely miserable. Three of us in a two bedroom and it was super cramped. We had vaulted ceilings. That was great. And he just came to us in like one of the worst times in our entire life. And it, the whole interview, it's like 30 fucking minutes. And it's just like, it's just Noah being like, I know I could see, I could see it in your eyes. You, you know, you, you're excited. You want to take on the world, but it just doesn't work like that. Or some shit. I said something crazy. The whole interview was just me eating licorice, fighting back tears. Then being like, uh, it's, it's, we were eating. Yeah, I ate hella. Yeah, hella I was delicious. wondering if this interview was going to be like an early Crystal Castles, like we can't see Ethan Cat's eyes or Alice. But you know, it's nah, just nah, like we're, really we're, like we're, we're yeah. like we're like we like to now. talk and we have You're huge happy. egos and we like people to know. things Yeah, about haven't us. you spoken? Yeah. Like, ever someone told me he was like, oh yeah, he spoke at Yale. I was, like, uh, I was like, oh, he's a talker? I yeah. was like, what the that wasn't, fuck? That wasn't me. What the fuck? <laughs> that, was, that was Lucian who spoke at Yale. <laughs> I did speak at Yale. Uh, <laughs> I also got COVID at Yale. Um, so shout out, uh, thanks for that campus for giving me an uncurable long-haul disease. Um, I did speak at Yale. It was actually a very fun experience. I am from lower middle class. I mean, very poor growing up early on. And you, you see, you see Yale in movies. You see Harvard. You watch Gossip Girl. It is exactly like that. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. I yeah. cannot. I cannot believe the hierarchy, the oh, yeah. archetype of just the Yale man. Uh, right. Ridiculous. And I gave a speech like I don't know, like 100 people or something, and it was, it, it wasn't very good. I wrote it on the plane over, and I just came up with random terms. I just thought about, and you know, like what's the hallmark of an artist? It's coining new phrases mm -hmm. like Warhol the superstar blah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. forever so I was all I need to coin something so I coined uh okay I coined <laughs> fuck do I think I am uh <laughs> I I brought I said the word uh post uh post rationalization like you know just making something purely for the aesthetic value yeah. and then, well, that's what everybody and then does, putting words and then putting multi-syllable words around it exactly yeah. which is what we all do but we want to sound smart and we, yeah. and we listen yeah. to the New York Times and shit but uh, so I did whatever I did that and I DJed a skull and bones party. Yeah, I was gonna say that's the that's the thing about like Ivy League schools that always throws you for a loop. Like all these historical like adrenochrome eating ass societies. Yeah. The problem was though I was asked to DJ the skull and bones party and of course I'm going to DJ that. But I no one likes when Chandler and I DJ. No one likes it. And they especially don't like it when just I DJ. And oh, so what I, are you playing? Like Peaches, Double A, Triple X, oh, like yeah. a lot of mid thousands kind like, of yeah, hero yeah. trash. Same, like, same, same, same. No, exactly. Like yeah. it's a very, but it's like if you have taste, you're gonna like that. If yeah. you don't, you're, you know, you're an idiot. But um, Dude, so I, we're I, talking I, to ourselves. Yeah, so yeah, weird. <laughs> no, no, no. The, we're the, still <laughs> always dropping Ed Banger and DJ sets, and no. some people don't know what we're doing. No, you said King Night Salem before, like, or a DJ set like King Night Salem. Yeah, I was yeah. like, well, yeah, duh, like that's duh. the whole. thing. You know what's funny is that Chandler and I are eye on one and two, and we're just talking <laughs> to a blank wall right now. <laughs> we're talking to a mirror right now. <laughs> yeah, y'all think you think it's a joke. Um, so I, I whatever DJ that I went in there. It was uh, it was finals week at the very end of school, and all these girls. They were very. I, it was. I think there was like some sort of skull and bones rush night almost, and so it was these very young Yale affiliates, and they only all, all they wanted to do was hear Drake. They just wanted to hear yeah. Drake. They wanted to hear, you know, the top forty rap, and I refused to give it to them. And people were, but these people are, are Yale men, and they don't want to just heckle me. They're very astute and they're very refined in their manners, and so they were just kind of like, they're just. They're just stealing glances at me in the hardest, most direct way. They're just looking at me. They their <laughs> friends and be like, yeah. And I was like, I, what year was this? Uh, 20, 2001, right before the Twin Towers fell. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> so you're saying they were just. Having, it, was, it was 2019. They were in, right. It was right before coronavirus oh, okay. hit, and okay, that's okay, why I got okay, that's okay. why I got COVID. So they were implying with very aggressive stares that you should be playing, but you assumed that you should be playing Drake, is what you're telling. 100. That's, that's, that's great. That's what Implicative Drake stares. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Beam, well, well, you know, those secret society types, they can, like, beam things directly into your brain. You know, like, these are the people that <laughs> run the world. They beam Drake right into your brain. Dude, I mean, I, I, can, I, can, get, I can get way into that kind of shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for you to get into that kind of shit. I've heard that you can get into that kind of shit. That's, yeah. all, that's what I've heard of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm the most sane person in America, I swear to God. I swear. But you I have, like, it. Tom DeLong edge energy, right? In terms of the well, shit the, that you're the, the tattoo alone, <laughs> the TR three B, oh, the you, you know Area fifty one, Lockheed Martin, you know the, the classic triangle UFO. Um, no, I love Tom Long. He's like my favorite artist. But the problem is right now is he's just shilling for the government right now. What, yeah. what the fuck are you doing over there? <laughs> he's dropping my uh, bait, bro. Tom Long's just shilling for the government right now. Even though lately he's kind of been uh, opening up a little bit and and making some weird kind of cryptic tweets implying that whatever aliens are fucking around here like have always been here, which I'm kind of into because I don't think aliens and UFOs are real because it's all just gatekeeped by the government. And like it's clear as day that NASA and every other space agency in the world are lying to us. Um, there's, if, if people want a real good frame of reference for how they're lying, one, join every flat earth facebook group you can because they don't know the answers they don't no no they don't, they don't know the answers but they do Union know squares that way bro <laughs> <laughs> um, yo chandler your mom's calling <laughs> cut his mic cut his mic um, but uh long story short is i as i joined 50 facebook flat earth pages and you can still find the instagram page it's called facebook flat earthers and I would take these people's profile pictures and I would paraphrase the comments they would make because I was very curious as to what led these adults to believe the yeah, Earth yeah. is flat. And all it made me realize is that space agencies are lying. And it led me to this incredible documentary. I believe it's called Celestial. There's two of them. They're on YouTube. Maybe they took them down. I don't I've, know. I've heard, it's called Celestial. Celestial. Yeah, I've heard of it. And this. it's all these people who have these like $60,000 telescopes and focus on the moon for like weeks at a time, get it perfectly in focus. Mm -hmm. And then they record all the footage and it's like, yo, this is like a hella colorful celestial mm -hmm. planet filled with lights and movement and shit going on but every space agency in the world is basically just muting all these photos making it think that it's just barren nothingness out there and right. shit like that so that's where i really started to understand that aliens and ufos and shit are all just gatekeeping. the moon down. has been populated yeah the yeah. moon has some fucking gnarly shit on it no doubt in my mind even though the footage is fake the footage of the moon landing footage is fake it's clear as fucking day it's like it's on a set like, no, we can all agree on that yeah or it's like the tick or i'm getting my information from tiktok now uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like on tiktok the people who uh uh astral project the people yeah. who astral project they're like we can never astral project into area 51 there's like a dome around it we can never astral project onto the other oh, side of remote the remote viewing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and uh, yeah. i do believe them yeah. as clear as i believe in chemtrails i do think i've been heavily affected by chemtrails i Completely do think real. i do think it's a neurological suppressant and i 100 percent think that i have been negatively impacted by that and i think that is why i'm a burden on the american healthcare system they're se they're seeding the atmosphere 110 percent the government's lying to us it's 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 unbelievable um but what you're saying what, what, what did you say earlier that kind of got me got me kind of excited um what's going on? i forget what did i say Mention, oh beaming shit that people say oh yeah, yeah all right for anybody who sees this and hasn't seen my tweets about it or any instagram posts and all that there's something everyone needs to read, and you guys need to read it too if you don't, yeah, yeah. If you don't know. Kyle no. Odom's Manifesto. Do you know who Kyle Odom is? No. Kyle Odom was a mass shooter in, a, I believe, 2017, 2016. And basically this dude went to a pastor in a, d -d 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 Idaho. Came to Idaho, trained Marine, trained ex-Marine with a handgun, uh, fully loaded with hollow point bullets, shot this pastor, unloaded a clip into this guy. At least six bullets hit this dude, and one of those hollow point bullets came into his skull and missed his brain by like an inch and he miracles, miraculously survived. And if you, you guys know about hollow point bullets, like yeah. what they do, like they yeah. just, they fucking destroy your shit. They mm -hmm. blow up inside of you. This dude got hit in the head with one, he's alive. Anyway, Pastor Tim Remington, now he's a, uh, I believe he is now a legislator, lawmaker, whichever it is in Idaho now. Uh, basically this kid, um, very smart ex-Marine, I think he was a biochemist, something like that, studying one of those really nerdy things that I, not explain or describe because I'm not too intelligent and never went to college. But this dude um, was very stressed out with school, so he started meditating. He got into meditation, went to open up his chakras. Halfway through it, he went into a complete uh, uh, sedative state. And in that sedative state, a beautiful being came to him and he started to merge souls with this fucking beautiful fucking woman. And she like totally gave him an orgasm, made him feel great. And halfway through it, he like broke out of it. Was like, what the fuck? Felt entirely great. He felt amazing. He was like, oh my God, that was awesome. But what he did was, allegedly, is he basically revealed to uh, the reptilians that he is too smart and he knows they exist. So then the reptilians started harassing him incessantly. Wouldn't let him live because he was too smart. 
basically he tried to kill himself multiple times they stopped him each time it let him then all of a sudden he got a random uh they told him to get a burner phone telepathically they told him to get a burner phone he got it randomly got a text message from this man named tim remington his pastor so he moves to idaho starts going to this church at this church all these people are fucking reptilians according to him they have immense technology we can't even begin to to, to understand and uh they fucked with them they fucked with them for like months he tried to kill himself nothing worked out for him and then uh basically he kind of lost his shit he was like, I don't want to do this anymore. They threatened his family. He said, I'll do whatever you want. They said, be our sex slave. And then they just kept tormenting him to the point where he took that gun and shot the pastor. But as he did that, he wrote like a 20 page manifesto, shot the pastor, drove to Washington DC, went to the White House, threw the manifesto over the gate. And then Whoa. Secret Service arrested him. And then he went to court and they're like, oh yeah, he's schizophrenic. Let's put him in prison, you know, blah, blah, blah. And just read this dude's manifesto, Kyle Odom's manifesto, where he draws what the reptilians look like. He explains everything that they do. Um, I believe it like 75%, I think it's real. 70, 75% of it I think is real. But basically, yeah, telepathic shit. There's there's some interdimensional shit going on. There's some people out there oh, that sure. are really I'm with, that. with us. I don't, I don't know much about that, but I do, oh, I do know a little bit about that. But I do enjoy those videos of Hillary Clinton on YouTube where it's like oh, yeah. Hillary Clinton expelling eggs out of her mouth and oh, yeah. whatever. Or like yeah. her metal leg. The metal leg. The metal that leg. was true. She does have a body double. All the politicians in Elite have body doubles. Uh, okay. The, the <laughs> one where someone like in a crowd yells at her and she does the weird like yeah, spasm yeah. Oh, thing. Yeah, right. that, was, I, that, that video is so fucking yeah, underrated. It's yeah, like, definitely. come on. And they're all they're all scrubbed off YouTube now. Yeah. Every single yeah, one. Yeah. Every single fucking video that has any type of you know, unveiling of what's really going right. on. It's all fucking gone now, man. It's insane. But yeah, I mean, it's like, I, I I truly think of it this simply. You're going to look at me with a fucking straight face and tell me like, uh, what's the one dude, the one, the one main Republican guy that looks like the fucking dude from the uh, Pan's Labyrinth with the fucking, he's like the main Republican guy. He's really fucking- Chuck Republican. Schumer? No, it's not Chuck Schumer. It's not Chuck Schumer. It's the guy- Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. He's fucking, he's got the, his face is hella droopy and shit. Oh, Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna tell me with a straight face that Mitch McConnell was a human being. Oh, yeah. You I, know what I mean? I, I say this all the time. Like, look at this fucking guy. It doesn't look like no, a human no, being. Not even close. him, like yeah. Nancy Pelosi and shit. Like, if I can, uh, <laughs> later, <laughs> later, later I'll show you. I'll, I, if I can find the image, there's an image someone can pop. Because at the end of Kyle Odom's manifesto, he writes down a whole list of all he, of all the high up politicians and shit that he knows are reptilians. And someone made this, uh, this uh this image together of all of just all their uh, all their normal like uh, what, what do you call those the, the photos of politicians that's like framed and it's like you know for sure yeah like all the all <laughs> <laughs> you just lost all credibility all credibility has been no, lost no, 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 no. <laughs> he's a photographer he's a photographer he knows these words he knows these words i don't know these words i don't know anything um but when you compare all these politicians that he claims are reptilians and you just look at their portraits you know it's you're, there's no way you're gonna tell me that Nancy Pelosi's not a lizard. There's no way you're gonna yeah. say that Greta Thunberg isn't some type of fucking alien, dude. Yeah. Like, oh, for sure. Mind blowing that people yeah. think so that shit's true. normal. It's not fucking normal. You're telling me that Greta Thunberg, who's 19 and like four foot one and looks like that, is like, <laughs> like literally, like that's insane. That's you're fucking out of your fucking mind if you think that's just. Oh yeah, it just happened to be Greta Thunberg happens to be the one in charge of climate change. She just looks like that. It's fine. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. That is a good point. <laughs> like it's, it's, Wait, do you guys fuck with Stephen Greer? Of course. Uh, yeah. I don't. No. <laughs> no. I, I don't at all. Just because. Um, I honestly, don't know who that is. Um, okay. He had that one. Uh, he's the really buff UFO dude. All right. So the deal is, is most UFO guys are full of shit and they're government shills. I, I thought that was the one guy who actually worked for the government. And no, no, no. This guy didn't work for the government. You're thinking oh. of Bob Lazar. Bob, Bob Lazar is sick. Yeah. Bob Lazar is legit. Bob Lazar is legit. Yeah, because sure. he, yeah. he he admits that like he doesn't even believe in any of the alien shit they talk about. He's like, no, I just made anti gravity fucking yeah. nonsense. But Stephen Greer, there's two things about him that are fucked up. One. If you ever watch any of his interviews or his talk seminars, he's a huge fucking douchebag. He just likes to brag, like, well, one time I was in the room with uh, Bill Clinton and they yeah, told me, yeah, oh, yeah. aliens exist. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, how can you prove any of this shit? You're just like a, just a dude in a polo with the biggest, he has like, his arms are like the size of Brock Lesnar's. Like, he's yeah, just, like, and it doesn't match his head size. Really yeah, his head and his little glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that being but, said, come on the pod. <laughs> please, Stephen Greer, <laughs> please. Um, but uh, I, I think it's very dangerous what he's doing is bringing these groups of people out to the desert and having them meditate intensely and making things appear in the this sky. That's what Honor was just saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, like that shit's, that shit's dangerous, dude. Cause that's it not, is. You're not no, making, it is dangerous. You're not making like 
alien UFO show, if you're making like actual spirits. So this is a group beings, sentiment that what he's doing is yeah. irresponsible. Oh, yeah, but I, I read a bunch of testimonies just online of people who like went to his workshops. Just like, what did they just say? like non-biased. You know, they, they weren't advertising for him. They were like, it was fucked. Like shit absolutely appeared. That's, I that's, went as like a joke. And it's, it's fucked terrifying. up. You this do dude not freaks me out. That's, yeah. that's why I'm afraid of. We were talking about our show last night, and the, like, the last song is like the acapella Lord Jesus thing, but like everybody was singing it. And that's why I'm honestly afraid to pray sometimes because I feel like, like this is a reach, but people are so mentally, like spiritually unstable. It's like why my. <laughs> Ah oh, man, I'm just becoming my father, but um, <laughs> it's why it's why my parents they wouldn't let me go to the uh, the magic show. The uh, I'm I'm using I'm trying to use you afterwards. What is it when you uh, hip the like, hip the hypnotization the hypnotization show the, hip, the hypnotizer guy? They wouldn't let me go to they wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't let me, the hypnotist yeah they wouldn't let me go to that show because if you leave your mind vulnerable and weak like spirits will enter whatever yeah, you yeah, yeah. Mind. if you leave the door, the door cracked for Satan he'll slip in whatever uh, but I mean on whatever level that is kind of true and I'm like man even yeah. if it's like a positive energetic thing and people are opening themselves up to that I feel almost like morally responsible for these the downfall of these children and myself I mean I'm already feeling like I have a downfall I feel like I'm actually a psychopath I think I've been I think you're I've fucking been. you're fucking crazy. <laughs> In what like, way? Let's explore that. Yeah. I mean, I just like, uh, to be honest, <laughs> to be honest, um, if I'm looking at it scientifically, my family, like, a bunch of my cousins have committed suicide from schizophrenia. Like, my uncle's schizoaffective. Like, my family just has extreme anger issues. Like, they're just yeah. all yeah. like happy. You know what I mean? So it's definitely congenital. Um, shouts out to my family. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I just have, I just have problems. You know, we all have problems, but I just, just do weird things and I can't be right and I can't live right and I'm always just so fucked up. My health is so bad. Like I have a, <laughs> like I everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Chateau Marmont laundry pill bag full of, <laughs> full of all my supplements. <laughs> um, I don't have anything good. But what I supplements have a, are you? Oh, we got some Flora Symmetry Vitanica. What? <laughs> and it, NAC. The government's trying to ban NAC. I what get is it, it while you can. What is NAC? Uh, it's uh. It's a, it's, it's, it's a glutathione precursor, but it's an antioxidant. But basically, it really helps with COVID, long, co long haul COVID patients to be specific. And so, the government, this is why I don't trust the vaccine. Okay, we're not, all right, we're not anti. I'm Here not, we go. <laughs> Jesus right, Christ, let's guys. It. Let's get into it. I'm not anti vax. We're all vaccinated. I have the tetanus shot. We have that, ah, 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 whatever. Um, but I just, I have certain fallacies with how they're pushing the vaccine. First of all, when Trump did the Project Warp Speed or whatever, we're going to have vaccines in three months. All the Democrats, you can look at the, yeah, you can yeah. look at the reviews. Oh, we're not going to take that. We would never take that until it's fully tested for years. Oh, but as soon as Biden gets in, we're going to push it, you know? So it's that political motivator. Two, lots of people have died from the vaccine. It's and being covered e up. And even, even if one person had died from a, a prior vaccine to COVID, they, they would shut it down. They would, they would go back to trials. They wouldn't let it happen. Yeah. So there's that. Um, and neurological disorders, seizures, yeah, all there's sorts just of things. there's all, all, all sorts of things, but um, and plus it's like the suppression of prophylactic antigens that can be added to people's diet simply things as simple as zinc, you know, vitamin D, uh, vitamin C, uh, etc., niacin, which is a big one, yeah, uh, that I take like every day now because yeah. I, I do have long, long haul COVID. Uh, it's like it's really fucked me up, honestly. I've had a horrible last year, but. Um, and like, like ivermectin, which I have as well. Like all those things are proven to help. They're proven prophylactics, but the government's trying to suppress those things. And it's like, why? You know, why are you pushing the vaccine instead of these things? And they seem a little too concerned about our health. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. McDonald's is still open, bro. Yeah, we yeah. don't have driverless cars, right. bro. Yeah. Like we, yeah. you know what right. I mean? Like, and, uh, yeah, I've never, you ever heard all of the government yeah. push any type of like immune booster? Never. Yeah, all, yeah, all of the, all, we have such a dangerous world but yet the vaccine is this thing and they're doing anything to push it like we're gonna give you shake shack and in and out if the, you the most yeah. insane thing like, ever like you gotta you have to give me fast food to make me take a fucking <laughs> like okay what what what, what came out <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, smart, all they're smarter than we think <laughs> those fries are fucking amazing yeah. but no yeah. it, was like, it was like pfizer's evaluation came out the other day and they 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 made a profit of like 29.8 billion dollars just right. from their vaccines there's just so much money to be made and it's just it is fishy if you look at it from a third eye perspective it's definitely a little fishy whether or not it's some global conspiracy with 5g implants da, 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 or if it's fucking which i which i don't believe i do think it's more of an isolation of uh 
you know, Fauci's power, somebody else's power, somebody like all these people with a lot of power want to maintain and extend that power. And it all yeah. sort of works in this symbiotic yeah. relationship, which is probably what's going on. But uh, it's just everyone's just shilling for like just global elite power. That's like all it is. Right. All, they want, it, all they want. They just want complete. I mean, I, it, it just feels like all they want is just everyone dependent on the government. And then we just have a slave class in the government. And that's it. That's all it's heading towards. Like it's the only logical like direction it goes to. Like yeah. I, I'm not. I I do need to know more about these vaccines. That sounds like the classic Republican trope. Like we need to know the science behind it. Like I am a scientist. I could. I guess I could say I'm a scientist. I got a pre-med degree. True. But um, I don't know. I don't know how to interpret that data at all, though. But <laughs> I thought you were about to say. I thought you were about to say. I don't have it on me. <laughs> but. Yeah. but Long COVID, really, like on a serious note, it really sucks. And I'm like in all yeah. these forums, and like I've done all the research because I have. I'm, I've always been very temperamental, and I've had horrible health my whole life. Like the people who know me, like they'll, like, in the kind of other side of the culture, will be like, "Oh, he's the real born from pain." Like because I'm just always like the Ian Connor reference. Shouts out to Ian Connor, genius, legend, true ambassador of the culture we're in now. Change the entire world. Um, change the entire game. That uh, fuck, fuck talking about COVID. We'll transient into into Ian Connor. <laughs> no, but yeah. We, oh yeah. We, <laughs> oh yeah. Chill and I were watching like the the this this talk show and like Rocky and Ian were being interviewed and we're just thinking about this very interesting critical component of culture, fashion culture, and I mean culture in general because it encompasses music and everything that has yeah. been forgotten that will be forgotten like no one's going to remember that ian connor literally and it, like went to asap mob and they cultivated this whole fashion scene and yeah. every yeah. And the virgil would not be a louis vuitton if it weren't for ian connor and asap mob you know what i mean and that's just like crazy thing that they're never going to be able to teach and is it that important to teach i mean i think i think it's pretty There's a lot of virgil stories i could tell same yeah, <laughs> it's one time. It was it was just funny in that interview too. It's like you know ASAP Rocky being like, "Yo, no one was dressing like this before me and stuff." But then, but then the other thing that like you're saying like it's gonna be forgotten. What's gonna be forgotten even farther behind that is like the 4chan fashion page, like predating yeah. mm -hmm. all of or that. The Facebook, the Facebook yeah. Saint Laurent page. Oh, dude, that one or uh, I don't know. Did you guys, were you guys ever in a luxury and fashion on Facebook? Oh yeah, oh, yeah dude, no, you're the man. I you're was, the fucking man. I was deep into it. Yeah, it was great. I, I got a they they. They flamed four me. Four pins? They flamed no. me. Four pins? Uh, Jake Wolf. Oh, uh, four pins, of course. Yeah. It was like a blog. Yeah. yeah. Luxury and fashion flamed me hella hard because I had a, a, a Ralph Lauren women's skinny jeans because we there was a forum about skinny jeans. Everyone was like, yo, this dude's gay, man. Why are you wearing women's jeans and shit? And then <laughs> shouts out Jacob Hetzer, who has unfollowed me for like the 16th time on Instagram, uh, <laughs> even though we're tight. Uh, messaged me directly. Was like, "Yo, you're hella sick, man. You're cool." And I was like, mm. "That was like the first dude that ever ever reached out to me in any capacity." I do like leaping back and circling around to us all wearing tight jeans. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Sick. That's a very important. Yeah, I, it's a uniform. How is? Did you guys grow up in New York or like generally what part of the country? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah. Damn. I don't. I have no idea what the Philadelphia culture is to be honest. But like in Colorado, I was the only one wearing tight jeans. Yeah, same. And, exactly. Okay, we're, then yeah. we all the same experience. Yeah. And, like, oh, like you know, people hurling slurs at you and yeah, for, right. for, for a while i just like wanted to be gay because of that exactly. you know what i mean yeah. like i was all i'm down to be gay i have no issue with being gay like i, I just thought it looked i sicker. want to be it gay like it looks, yeah, sick. Right. Like it looks yeah. sicker than like the bag no, it, it was, it was I but I, like when we were in high school other kids reaction was like they just couldn't even fathom they were like right. what is like, what is don't why? your balls hurt I, was, bro? I, I would literally be wearing levi 510s like the tightest version i could with like a button up flannel yeah, and like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like like Paul Rodriguez SBs or something and people yeah. would be like oh my god like that's yeah. so you know like I don't understand I don't understand how we got there because we've had tight like we've had tight jeans like 30 other times in the last 40 years where that were that was yeah. popular yeah totally well also also where we're from Philly there was and coincided perfectly like we were in high school there was that whole MIA scene it was like MIA spank rock yeah plastic little uh Santa Gold. It was this whole thing. I mean, Big shout out Santa Gold. Off, and it's yeah, not exactly. like the, those people. And that was the first jeans. time I ever saw like hip hop music crossing over into tight pants, and it was like so next level to me. And they could, they talk about not getting enough credit. They really. Uh, they honestly, precursors they, yeah, they were. They, they precursed Kanye for sure. They did. It was Kanye, before. Kanye. Always, I. It's weird always talking about these people. Because I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that meeting I had with Kanye, and then I'm like. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm yeah. like, oh, Kanye did this. I'm like talking about a man who could see this and be like, 
that kid's an idiot. Like, yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, he always attributes his tight jeans to like, oh, Dior. Like, I saw Hedy's show, but right. I, I agree with you yeah. guys. It was definitely, I think it was from that. Yeah. Well, it was around the same time because Eddie was at Dior then. It was, like, but it was... you forget the, the Hedy Dior shit was like, oh, three. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that shit was like three, four years later. Right. Man. But there's all, there's so many things like that that you can pinpoint where it's like things that are actually way more important for culture and aesthetics than you realize have this really subtle ripple effect and they'll never be like lauded or you remembered can't trace as much it. as yeah. Just, it's impossible. Never. But it wasn't really Eddie. It was like Bowie. It was like yeah. You know, it was like the original shit. It was like yeah. it was ladies' pants. Like totally. let's be real. Yeah. But he did mix that. Well, not O three so much, but O four. He mixed like that that prep chic with the Bowie and with the rock yeah. star is the rock star chic, you know, and that, mm. and that was new. I still don't understand the heady story. I've watched documentaries, but it's like one day, I feel like he was an industry plant, honestly, because one day he's, he's working in the Louis Vuitton store, yeah. just a normal guy in Paris working in the Louis Vuitton store, yeah. customizing Louis Vuitton bags, just customizing them, drawing on Louis Vuitton bags, doing yeah. the thing. And then one day Bernard, I forget his last name, the guy, who LVMH head, uh, walks in and somehow he's just like come with me and like two years later like he's the, the men's the director of your home like well he did Eve Saint Laurent or, or he was work, he did work at Eve Saint Laurent he, he worked first. there but it's still just yeah. like no I know the, the well I mean Virgil's had a Louis Vuitton yeah. guy, bro like, <laughs> by Ian Conner see an industry yeah. plant <laughs> N- no, well, okay, like. <laughs> Can we say that Virgil, Virgil is an feels industry like one to me, but you guys. Well, the problem is, is just like, an OG dick writer. Like, yeah. Well, the problem is, is like I, I've been, I like, didn't grow up with Virgil, but like I was there yearly. You know, Luke and I would be backstage with him with Ben Trill and like DJing. He'd be yeah. all around. We mm-hmm. go to all the parties with him, and he's just such a charismatic, pleasant man who I do believe is a true artist for sure. He's very like a lot of people talk shit about Virgil this and that. They can say what they want. But I do believe he's a true artist, and he, you know, we were there from then, and then he got that, but... He is an artist, but he's also, I think his main mode is used car salesman. Like or it, you could, I mean, you could just say used car salmon or salmon. Uh, <laughs> used car, use salmon. car salmon. Used Virgil, car salesman, or you could job. say 5% tweak Duchamp, you know? It's yeah. like whatever you want to categorize something has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like post-rationalization. You know? <laughs> there you go. Like, I'm going to drop another term. I'm going to yeah, premiere yeah, it. it. We're, we're doing an eye on pod premiere term. Oh, for let's me. Get it. <laughs> the term is trans ironicism <laughs> trans ironicism uh, but it has nothing to, it has nothing to do with gender dysphoria it has everything to do with uh <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> that was fire. I, I, <laughs> Thanks for coming I, I, on, guys. That was sick. <laughs> I, I, you, you can ask him that. I'm always, just kind of banging, I'm always like banging my head on shit. Dude. I don't know why. Chandler was in uh, special classes from an early age because they thought he had a little bit of mental instability, to put it lightly. But <laughs> that, 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 Premier the trans ironicism, I can explain how. Trans ironicism, very simple. It's so ironic, we come full circle to where it's actually the David Foster Wallace uh, sincerity again. Yeah, right. So we were talking about this at Beach Bosses. We like, talked about this with Paul Banks. Right, as Paul well. Banks, too. It's yeah. like you can't, like, so many levels of irony, it's like, actually, is, are there zero levels of irony? They're just. At, yeah, at, the, at that yeah, point, yeah. it is. That's why I'm saying post tra- for a while, I think. That's why yeah. I'm saying because it was post ironic, but I'm saying trans ironic, right, full, right, right. full yeah. spectrum. So when I uh, don't ever get to speak at Yale again, that's what I would talk about. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that I, was the last I time. actually I do enjoy talking about that. Like, yeah. so do you guys, because it's such a we're in that time now. You know, yeah. it's like I can't remember a specific example now, but it's like things that were stupid five months ago are now so pertinent. Yeah, and that's it. Like this, the cycle has sped up. So well, yeah, how do you feel about that with, like, the mid-aughts thing? Because obviously you're carrying the traditional along. What did you say? mad aughts thing? You said? Mid-aughts. mid-aughts. I feel like your guys' aesthetic like is very, like... Like, Blockhouse, Crystal You know, Castles. mid-2000s revival. Oh. I feel like you're ahead of, no, I've, I've ahead never, of I've, a mid-2000s I've never heard of that before. We are, we are like, uh, I, guess, I guess, like, the end all of the loop, I feel like. Um, right? Like, it's like, in a... Train. It's it's not ironic though. It's like it's incredibly authentic. Like there's no yeah. there's no difference That's of what. The sense yeah. of there's yeah. no like right. there's no like oh I wish we looked like these dudes in the two thousands. Like oh dude you know That's what's a cool? pro- that is a problem. You can you can see it when it's leaning into the ironicism. You know what I mean? It's very yeah. it's very obvious to see. And I'm we're definitely we're definitely not doing that. Even though on paper it looks like it. Like we're doing the, the rock revival jeans thing. We're that is true. Like that, that is true. You know we look like <laughs> this. Like I like the Strokes. Crystal Castles is my favorite band. I could but. I could say probably just subconsciously. We just want to be the the next 
coolest white guys on the planet. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, there's... This there's is what no, it looks like. Making white no, guys cool again. No, this this is what it looks like. I this think is what it the, is. This is what the two coolest white guys look like. <laughs> yeah. Like, I will, no, you we'll guys say, are bringing me back in with this. Like, yeah, giving me inspo. I'm, I'm like, yeah. damn, we, we could have just kept doing it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, we didn't have to take the, uh, the, the jeans the size up. Like. I know, I know. <laughs> no, it's just... Uh, I don't know, I just, just always want to look... I blame Lil Wayne for that, but... Fuck. Uh, what were we talking about exactly? Um, looking cool. Trans ironicism. The, the cool. mid thousands coming mid-thousands back. Coming yeah. Back. Um, well, the the problem is like you look on the YouTube. I'm on like a weird YouTube algorithm that I love on one of my accounts where I can click endlessly on like I don't know what loop it is, but it's all these songs. It's basically Blink 182, super watered down, and it's all these guys singing like that. And sometimes a lot of trap drums. Sometimes yeah, 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 That's yeah. like the obvious mechanism of the trans ironic cycle right. you know it's coming around on, and that's a perfect way to commodify it because we're still i talk about this all the time just like we're we're still in the war we're in the warholian era still you know he set the stage for commodification and art and mm-hmm. commerce to be hand in hand and so we're just seeing that go further and further and it's not going to be rectified because that is the perfect thing to go hand in hand with capitalism and Western society in general, yeah, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. So yeah. why would we care about it? But there, I definitely think we think there's room to be the two coolest white guys <laughs> who are doing the fuck the 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 David Foster Wallace, uh, um, not being ironic, you yeah. know, to be like trying to actually make art and trying to make idiotech and yeah. trying to be yeah. those guys who are very sincere about the craft and you know crying a little bit to the songs and like yeah. you know doing that thing and i think it's very that's what i grew up on yeah. and like late high school I, I never heard a i ne- i hadn't really heard a uh, a non-christian song until freshman sophomore year of high school my right. friend showed me colin mckay huge shouts out colin mckay um he was like the coolest kid in school skater he one day he was like this. Ha- this happened to me multiple times in my life. You can you know you you, you can like, never escape your character flaws. Like yeah. it's like this predetermined destiny. It's happened to me some like five or six times. Like I think of, this has happened. But I was like kind of like you know shy, quiet. And he was like, No, come here. Like you, you, this is your like it's, it's kind of my shot to be cool. You know, mm. go over and sit next to him in the desk. Put, pulls out the iPod. Uh, I was actually Phoebe's iPod. Phoebe Booth. Phoebe something. I don't know. Whatever. Pink iPod. Plays me TV on the radio, Wolf Like Me. And I was oh, like, yeah. holy Yo, shit. Peter, we what? met at the TV on the radio show. Really? Yeah, yeah. we met, yeah. Yep. <laughs> that is so cute. That is amazing. He, he plays me TV on the radio, Wolf Like Me. Then he plays me Pop the Glock, Uffy. Oh, there we go. Then yeah. he plays me Then he plays me Vanish, Crystal Castles. Then he plays me We Own the Sky, M83. Oh, my oh, God. Man. Okay, yeah, so you so were... He showed you the Bible. And then he plays me Pop Bottles, Birdman, Lil Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all... I, from that point on, and I... And I, I got a little shuffle my parents wouldn't let me have a shuffle like an ipod or anything they didn't want to want me listening to secular music got a little shuffle and i wait for them to go to bed and i'd go to bed and put covers on and i put my little headphones in and i'd listen to crystal castles and just like i don't know what it is about me but i've never met anybody who can let things hit like it's like i'm on ecstasy i if i listen to a song correctly i can literally oh, yeah. like transcend out of oh, my body for sure. like, oh, yeah. oh yeah sob it's crazy i've never yeah. met anybody who it's quite that hard it's like a reli- it really is a religion. Oh, for sure, one hundred percent. And I would, li- I remember one, the first time I put on baptism, and huge. I put and I was and I turned the lights off and I was walking to my bed as it was going and right as it dropped, so much euphoria. I just, I that literally, drop is I, huge. The yeah. drop is big. It's a big drop. <laughs> really, it's, it's a, a big great drop. drop. Yeah. It's a great drop. It's a Steve Aoki level drop. It is. And I just <laughs> fell for it. I literally went out of my body and just collapsed and <laughs> smacked my head on the bed frame and got another concussion, which brings me to the fifth concussion I've had in my life, which renders me legally retarded in uh, Colorado. So I have that going. But anyway, yeah. So all that music definitely formed me and Chandler is like a big Blink-182 guy, et cetera, et cetera. And we've come together on some other genre and, you know, personal aesthetics. And I think it's a good time to compose 90s and mid-thousands yeah. in a sincere way uh, yeah. with more than just Ableton or Logic, like dragging and shit, you know, making Yeah, it like, like not just doing the SoundCloud rap. Yeah, yeah. If, I mean, if, we're, if now we're going to segue into the music thing, I think that the only, I, I would say, like, I can speak for both of us, the only reason we really want to make music is because everything is very stale and very... St- it's it's just so sterile and it's it's just Lego blocks and we made a lot of music on Logic initially and it just became these kind of you know you're just placing it's oh just the drum lifeless. track here yeah it's just different colors and uh-huh, right. you know what I mean and 
everyone who's mu, mu, as you said music is so commodified now it's just, there's no soul there's no there's nothing in it and you think like you think radiohead was ever sitting in the studio being like well what if we made that the chorus you know like no they were like oh no this sounds cool let's just keep running this you know what yeah. i mean and you can hear now it's like oh let's get the little like guitar chord change and let's chop it yeah, up and reverse exactly. it and slow it down and yeah. oh, well, then we'll like oh what if you you know what i mean well, like, the chorus also, will be longer and you can yeah. hear that songs now are written like by a committee if you no, look at the, look at the credits of like any song you see on any chart there's like a, there's like 20 fucking people the, the crazy song. the craziest shit is just this whole new kind of like share the wealth boom of like this los angeles music industry yeah, now yeah, where yeah. where i know a lot of like these songwriters and stuff and like it was uh blink 182 my all-time favorite band which can go fuck itself now are you kidding me travis barker and mark hoppus and uh the dude from alkaline trio continuing on that project without tom DeLong yeah, is, yeah. is is honestly blasphemy it's insane like the, the only true artist of blink 182 was tom DeLong. that's a fact he fucking mm -hmm. innovated that band he pushed it forward and to see like them you know just dropping these like 16 song albums that are these two minute songs produced by uh What's his name? Uh, the lead singer of Goldfinger, uh, Feldman. Uh, uh, J no, I don't know if it's Jerry Feldman. I forget his name. Last name Feldman. And they released a Christmas song recently, um, about two years ago or so. And I remember I saw it. And I saw like a few posts getting shared on people's stories on Instagram. And it was like, oh, so sick. I co-wrote a Blink-182 song. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, you right. co-wrote a Blink-182 song yeah, yeah, yeah. with six other people. Yeah. That is the craziest right. fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And Tom's life. not even there. Yeah, exactly. Tom's not even there. And he was the one just going off with songwriting. And Mark's always been good at writing songs and shit. And I'm like, why? Why? You just got this new producer who's just telling you that you need these songwriters. And now, and that was the whole segue into Travis Barker now fucking with making rap music and shit. Yeah, and he's yeah. Like, it's, 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 it's a <laughs> Like abysmal, Machine man. Gun Kelly, yeah. Yeah, granted, Machine Gun Kelly's pop punk album, like, it's. It's it's very good, like objectively, <laughs> but like it's really cool. But you can't you can't you can't actually like listen to that because you know that it's just it's it's virtually just cookie cutter computer music. Yeah, like, yeah, you know? yeah. We're just reviving the dead fish of nostalgia. It's almost like yeah. my my dog died recently, and R.I.P. R.I.P. I've cried big time for sure. Uh, oh, it's the most. It's, uh, it's so it's so devastating. It's so that. devastating. Yeah. Uh, but I was on the phone with my dad as he was like. She was dying in front of him, and he was she was like laying in the lawn, whatever. And he was trying to give her like a, a nice passing on, and he put a dish of water in front of her mouth, and her like eyes are closed, you know, and she's still barely breathing. It's like heavy, and he starts like putting some water into her mouth, and she doesn't understand that she's trying to give her water for hydration. She starts paddling because she thinks she's like in oh. the ocean or something, and that's how I feel like the industry is. It's like we're getting this, we're like they're just. Like we are the, yeah, yeah, it's, you yeah. know what I mean? It's totally like trying to revive this nostalgia dog and we're like. Yeah, throw an empty like aesthetic signifier and they'll yeah, start cause like, yeah, you know, totally. We all know what these songs are. Like they, we all, we have all seen this new artist. It sounds like Blink-182. There's the trap drums. There's the Travis Barker feature. But yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh man, they're being all edgy. And like, there's the video with the mm -hmm. aesthetic. Like it's, you know, it's just, it's pure bubble gum. And there is a place for that. But my kind of bubble gum is I Kissed a Girl, Katy Perry. My kind yeah. of bubble gum is like, you know, all those Arab songs. Yeah. I, that shit is genius, incredible. I would highly recommend everybody listen. The only song I like to DJ that I haven't even never DJed, um, that I'm going to DJ if I ever DJ again, which will probably, probably be never, um, <laughs> is uh, the acapella of Perfume by Britney Spears. There's a specific oh, version wow. on SoundCloud where like it's a shitty acapella. The guy cut it out. And so you get these weird like artifacts, and artifacts yeah. around it. And That's it sounds sick. like, it sounds like, um, who is the woman? I always forget her name. I always try to remember. It's the uh, uh, Lil B sample, like, I am a, I'm God. Oh, yeah, I could not. And oh, Clans uh, Casino sampled her. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, uh was that Imogen Heap? Imogen, Imogen Heap, yeah, Imogen yeah. Heap, yeah. So it's like it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like Imogen Heap level, like I swear. And that and it just proves to you that yeah, Britney Spears is of course a tool of the industry, but she is by far and above as talented as oh, yeah. Imogen oh, yeah. Heap. I think I think Lucky is one of the best pop songs I've ever written. Oh. Yeah. And the Angel so Forever beautiful. was one. Britney yeah. Spears. So so beautiful. Yeah. I don't know. The state and that's just a signifier of the state of the whole industry, art, music. It's all kind of the same right now. And Everybody, everybody's pushing specific aesthetics that are politically expedient, ideologically expedient, mm -hmm. and I just don't know where the end of it is, to be honest. Well, I actually felt that we were at the end when the Sale Marker came out, the, mo the most recent one. What did you think about that? I love it. I mean, I love same. Starfall, like, as a video. Yeah, like, same. as, like, an eight-year yeah. eight hiatus. Incredible. I, I'm, I have goosebumps this. literally right now thinking of it. Yeah. I know. It's so it's good. It's incredible. But I was also sort of like, yeah, this is, like, the nightcap on the era. Like, we're, yeah, we're done totally. now. Well, I... Uh, 
But you guys are carrying the torch. Yeah. Well, that's what, that was what it was exciting about the show last night. Is like, I think a large reason because I I get super like black pill about the show all the time. I'm like, is music just can it not continue? It's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, completely, like, completely. The, the money is just leaving the industry. It's the money that does exist that's funneled into these NFTs. Like, the yeah. baby. It's just like, can it not? Is it just not? It has to be people's hobby from now on. Is it can't exist as it was. Yeah. Um. But I think a large reason why that happens is because. I think a lot of music that gets popular doesn't come from a real life uh, scene or space in any way. It's just like not, not at all. It's not like at all. Low no, that's kids on the internet. exactly correct. And and you no, know, nothing against these kids. Random kids from Middle America putting their shit online. Like that's sick. They should do that. But I mean, I live in New York City. There is not a scene like there was in any other era of New York City. It's just yeah, absolutely exactly. true. The last time there was a scene in New York to my knowledge, was like the Brooklyn scene of Animal Collective yeah, exactly. and all those guys. Yeah, and after that, yeah. it was dead. And before that, it was the Strokes. You know, before yeah. that, it was, the, you know, we can all do the Yeah, math. we came here. We always say we came we here came for the, the Strokes. Challenge. By the time we got here, it was like dirty projectors. And then by the time we were actually living here, it was done. Yeah. It was like tech. It was like techno. One yeah, it's like kinda. the techno shit started happening. But and it just dirty projectors is one of the most underrated bands of all time. That, we're, we were huge, huge we were fans. For us, um, yeah. That was like that was what I thought was the coolest shit when I first moved to New York. Like LCD sound system was really sick. Too. I mean, it's honestly yeah, was, overrated, but it rhymes. Yeah, no, it was yeah. A, it was an era. All that all that shit was amazing. That's when white people really had something for themselves, and now we have nothing. We had it going on though. <laughs> we yeah. literally we literally just decided. I don't know if this is controversial to say. I've never really heard anybody say it, but it's like maybe I'm sure they have. I'm not the original thinker here, but it's like white people just decided to commodify black culture, and in doing so we like people who didn't realize the commodification part of it just made that their own identity but yeah, it's not yeah, yeah, our it's yeah. not white people's culture to make our identity you know so it's just like this facade of course so right. it's dissolved our part of the culture which is in turn dissolving black culture too it's this yeah, parasitic right. toxicity our identity totally, totally, is totally. to be cucked now essentially yeah. no, completely, completely, 100%. You're right well also the White people get so offended at people thinking that they're they're white, so they want to do anything they can to prove right. that they're less white than other white people. You know what's so funny about the white people? That's why I've been getting tanned. That's why I've been tanning. Yeah. That's the only thing I can do. I'm, <laughs> I'm, right, so, I'm but, still so more tan than you. When someone's afraid <laughs> yeah, of being fun. thought of as too white, the um, the lead critic of IndieWire, half Colombian, he's got to tell Jeremy O'Hara. <laughs> it's a weird thing about the shame complex of white people. Like I like people say I, I'm the most like full of shame person they know. And, like it's a Catholic thing, but it's a yeah. wasp thing, but it's a Puritan thing. But yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. It's a colonial thing. You know what I mean? It goes back so yeah, long. It like, it's so weird. Like I wonder if we're just like have this inherited shame complex that really does stem from that point in history right. and has, you know, uh, picked up like a snowball effect. The now. shame has always been there. The cucked element is new. The cucked now, element is very we're all, new. We're like reincorporating, like, oh, we have to make this part of our identity now to be so. Right. I have, I, I, well, I, have, I, have, I have two thoughts. One thing we were talking about music earlier. One great, great euphemism about the dog and the paddling and that. That was, that was hard. Um, Someone call me a poet. Thing is, yeah. uh, we we're talking about uh, right before this. We we're talking about just the music and how it's just getting completely diluted. And the other thing is just, it, it's all kind of becoming this like just weird idea of what you should be when you're an artist or if you're going to yeah, be yeah, artist. Yeah. Right. I forgot to bring that. Very yeah, like it's it's all just this weird idea and it's like what what I hate the most right now that's happening is like um okay I'll say it. I don't give a fuck. This causes us beef with people. Who cares, bro? We can we can whoop ass, dude. We're homies. <laughs> Um, no, it's like, it's like, okay, so an, an example is you, you get a, the, the Gene Dawson, Gene Dawson, new, new hip artist, you know, he, he, he makes all right music, man. He's cool. Sure. But it was like seeing his, his high snow by interview and it's, it goes I'm inside the world of Gene Dawson and he's sitting on a beach with this in the middle of the night with a red spotlight on him with a bandana, with a grill. And he's like looking all cool. And I'm like, who the fuck do you think you are? You, you're a fucking, you're a fucking artist. You're like, you're so, you're high, you're, you're larger than life. You're so fucking sick. But why is Oasis so sick? Because if those dudes weren't being an Oasis, they would just be in the pub talking the same shit, watching yeah, football. Totally. Yeah. Blink 182, they're just fucking skater kids from yeah. fucking San Diego, not doing shit. And this, or, or when anyone's in a music video, like lip syncing their shit, even though granted, original help videos know it is doing some lip syncing but they are pretty advanced they're pretty, they're pretty cool um but yeah it's just this weird idea like oh i'm an artist i have to be I, my video has to be like this and i have to be in cool photos and we're just like dude we're just dudes we're, we're yeah. not like technically we're not really 
I mean, we are better than other people, but we're not like, you know what I mean? I just, I, there's nothing to actually, you cannot relate to a photo of a, of an artist in a red light fucking doing something. Yeah, like totally. You, you right. can relate to fucking Oasis because they're just smoking a cigarette. He's like, oh, he's done with that money in it. And you're like, oh, dude, that's fucking tight, man. That guy's cool. <laughs> Blink-22 making dick jokes on stage because that's yeah. what you did when you were totally. 18, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, that's a very good point. Like, Gene Dawson is, like, very talented and he like, he's a good musician and he makes, like, good catchy music and he has a lot of fans because of it. I don't know. I, I mean, we don't know him at all, but it's, like, that's just an example and I don't know if that's what he wanted or if it's a creative direction i don't really know who did what but it's a symptom of a larger issue it's 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 widespread fine art it's even worse it's like everybody fine art i think it's worse honestly because music has always been come out like when the beatles hit or elvis really like <laughs> music has been like not even an art form anymore. r.i.p yeah, elvis yeah, yeah. r.i.p elvis but fine yeah. art especially it's just the idea of what an artist is you know right, that's right. all it is and how we can like put those clothes on but obviously like talking about the new york scenes like the six, like Patty Smith wasn't doing that, da, 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 and then, mm-hmm. you know, like all no one was doing that. It was just like a way to live. It was just a way to live and a religion. Yeah, and, yeah. and people are treating things less as a religion now and more as just like a hobby, sort of like. You know, I mean, yeah, it's like a thing to put on Instagram, but yeah, it's people just trying to be this identity of an artist, and it's it's just not any of that. You know, it's so totally. funny. It's like the it's like the sh- it's like the wolf putting on sheep's clothing, but then also putting on the wolf's clothing again yeah. <laughs> you know like yeah. no totally <laughs> like, totally yeah. that's i mean there's also um i mean yeah whatever shit talking here's my example i've shit talked to her before uh phoebe bridgers i think is a great example yeah is she, is she like that video of her with the skull thing in yeah. her bedroom she, but she projects an aesthetic <laughs> of something that people want like they want some type of like honest songwriter like raw emotional thing but it's like there's nothing there. It's not that at all. The music is not there. But she she somehow has convincingly put forth the aesthetic that she's doing that, and everybody buys it. But then when they actually think about it, they're like, "Oh, this actually sucks." It's a very good point. But I I always think about that. And I'm like, yeah, totally. That's a managerial yeah. issue, and it's a a way of marketing an artist. But then I think about okay, like Rolling Stones. They just wanted to be black guys from the south. That's mm-hmm. all they wanted to do, yeah. you know. But somehow they were able to convincingly pull that off and also push forward a new genre. But I guess it's because like they are true artists, really. And, you know, what does a true artist do? They take in influences and it comes out a filter a different way. But I... And it also, also brings this theory I have about proximity. I'm thinking about, like, Bruce Springsteen, Nebraska, which is our favorite album. Oh, yeah. One uh, of the best. I think it's the best album ever, by far. I don't think there's anything that comes close we to that. We played it before our show last night. We just had it playing in the... <laughs> <laughs> the engineer was like... No, I'm not playing Bruce Springsteen. I'm like, bro, it's our show. Like, I play Bruce Springsteen. He's like, Bruce Springsteen. Like, yes. Bro. What about yeah. a playlist? What? A, why, why this album? And I'm like, just put on Nebraska. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, I think Nebraska is the best album of all time because I think it's the best album of all time in America. I can't speak for the rest of the world because post 1950, the the things that he's singing about and writing about are so inherently American and there is no way you can do better than that because every song you write now we're american it's about america you know an experience here da 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 because yeah. we are in this western culture and he did it the best by far there's no and plus he hit that good window of like post depression world war 2 vietnam kind of sentiment uh and like guys coming back from war with like uh like uh, dwindling morale yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah, that yeah. Like, dwindling morale that that uh, meritocracy that's downfall he could like he sensed the tremors in the water and sang about it in a haunting way with also a lot of bleakness and hope as well with combining like Bruce Springsteen's biggest references are like the Chuck Berry's and all those guys and he put that inside it's just a genius album but anyway um, I have no idea what I'm talking about now Oh, the proximity. So, far away like Bruce Springsteen it. is a guy from Jersey, right? Yeah. He has no idea about Nebraska. He has no idea about the shit yeah, actually yeah. in real life. But the pro- his whatever the proximity he is to it enables him to look at it from a viewpoint that's perfect. It's like me looking down at the street right now. I can see more of what's happening from an interesting angle and like understand the scope of the city better than the man who is in the city, the fishbowl right. uh, yeah. archetype, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I think the Rolling Stones had that going for them as well. Like their arms length to the south of America made them so interested that it was a true, genuine approach yeah, to that right. kind of music. And I think that's what Bruce Springsteen did. And I think, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, I think that that's what Chandler and I, our proximity is perfect to, not necessarily sonically, like, but 
time and culturally from like Crystal Castles and Radiohead. Not not really Radiohead so much. I just think about Idiotech. Yeah. But like yeah. you know, like mid mid thousands. You know, Dirty Projectors, all those bands, mid electronic indie pop that we're talking about. I think the proximity of how we're approaching it is conducive to catalyzing something that could be very special. Yeah, totally. Going forward right now. Yeah. So I don't really know. Rolling Stones were trying. Rolling Stones were trying to be black. Um, that's a lot. So, so you guys are emulating the boss. We call him the boss for a reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. He's, he's, our, he's our biggest inspiration, but also with... Uh, I mean, it's obvious. I've never really said this in an interview, but, like, in the show last night, you probably realized I would just be like, woo! Like, yeah. like all these weird little ad-libs is two things, Bruce Springsteen, Nebraska, and the other thing is I would go to a bunch of rodeos in, in, my, oh, in my hometown, true. and how they rope the cattle up, or when they get trying to get the cows in the pen, they'll be like, they'll just be like, hup, 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 right. hup, like that. And I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever heard in my life. And I'm yeah. like, holy shit, what yeah. if I was just doing that? Well, it's sick that you say that because I was thinking during the show last night of how much it felt influenced by Suicide, the band. Same, and same perfect. perfect. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. You, got it. you know what's so crazy? Like, yeah. Exactly. That, that's a very weird dynamic. Yeah. The the duel, <laughs> the Suicide and Bruce Springsteen yeah. back and forth. It, it sucks because you can't be cooler than the Velvet Underground and you can't be yeah, you cooler know, than, yeah. you can't be cooler than three bands on earth. I don't consider a rap you can like, like in the cool category because that just transcends like yeah. culture yeah, like, itself. Right. But like in terms of cool, because for some reason it seems like white people are the only people who want to be really cool. You know, like yeah. we have this <laughs> this debt to pay with cool, and we need right, to pay. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, it's so true. I don't it's understand so what it is. Like, why true. do we need to want to be cool so yeah, bad? That's so I true. I need it though. But anyway, yeah. you can't be cooler than the Velvet Underground. You can't be cooler than Suicide, and you can't be cooler than Salem. Those yeah, the, those are the three. True. You can't be. Cooler. I think I think Oasis deserves. Oh, Oasis. Oh, yeah, that's Oasis. true. But they're like a they're a like super group though. You know what I mean? I'm in my head. Okay, in, sure, in my you. head, to be cool, cool, you have to be niche. You know, like yeah, you have okay. to be like that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, Vincent Gallo too. Legend. Yeah. I was. <laughs> should, I, should I tell the story? Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, so I, basically, so one way or the other, was texting Vincent Gallo like um, two months ago or something, and. Because he was putting up okay, wanted yeah, posters. I, I guess yeah. I have to preface it with that. He was putting up these wanted posters. Oh, yeah. We saw, yeah. He kept sending them. Yeah. In, in, in Beachwood do. Canyon, mostly. Yeah. Uh, they and, showed up in New York, too. Oh, really? That's yeah. funny. So, uh, it, like, the one I found was in Beachwood. My friend sent it to me. And then I was at a party later that night. And I was with a man who is very good friends with Vincent. And he's like, let me see that. And I give him the thing. He's like, that's that's Vincent Gallo's. That's his number. Like, yeah, totally. I was like, I was like, word. So I, I texted it, and the, the, but the poster, the poster said, "Cancel this man. Vincent yeah, Gallo is yeah. a scumbag." Like, yeah. blah blah blah, whatever. Because he's just obviously doing it for a bit. I, I, uh, I, I wondered hilarious. if that was him. Yeah. Damn, I had no idea. There was one like right over. We weren't yeah, done. Yeah. You should have texted it. Anyway, yeah. I, I texted it, and I'm like, um, honestly, I could just read it. <laughs> um, I'm, about, I'm about to piss my pants. Oh, yeah, Ten seconds. Wait, wait. Yeah. We're back on the air. All right, we're back. Picking up where we uh, left off. We're uh, back. Oh, uh, yeah, so the Vincent Gallo poster. So I text this number, and I say, hello, Gallo adversary. Into the bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says, hello, spectator. <laughs> this is me. You can, you, can, you can get it now. My physique is meek, intellect strong. Don't bring evil here. A reference to Buffalo 66 mm -hmm. when he says, don't bring evil. Uh, before I acknowledge your stature, where is here? Beachwood Canyon, the rolling hills of the valley, the outstretched arms of Inglewood, Ocean's Edge, and the Southwest USA, or to the man himself. Impressive. That's a lot of real estate for a Colorado transplant. As far as you're concerned, I am the man. So be it. If you are the man, remain steadfast. Don't worry. I'm unwavering and undefeated. Thank you for your service. Remember this face. Sign him like a whole selfie. <laughs> uh, we will cross paths indefinitely. We already have. I know. Doubted your memory. Why? I never forget anything. Underestimation of myself, of you, myself, or maybe both. Only losers underestimate themselves. And the next time I see you, inevitably at Erewhon, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like uh, I'm never going to see this man at Erewhon. <laughs> but it was pretty funny. I saw him at a St. Laurent show after party 2018 when they did it on the beach. It was the most beautiful show I've ever seen. It was insane. They had these huge cannon lights bouncing off the cliffs of Malibu and into the incoming the incoming roll of the not only the tide but the clouds and the fog it was it was, it was breathtaking um and it really was but at the after party in nobu I, I for some reason at that time i was an idiot i had seen buffalo 66 i had seen brown bunny i had whatever but i didn't really look into vincent gallo and i thought he right. was sort of like a um 
who is the uh, like A-list Hollywood guy who is like he writes books and he also acts. Jane, uh, oh my God, he's like the the fucking poster boy for like the intellectual. He's in. He's like good friends with Seth Rogen. He James Franco. James Franco. Oh, yeah. James Franco. <laughs> That's what James Franco. I was like James Franco <laughs> wishes. Yeah. He thought Gallo was James Franco. I was like I was I was like oh this guy's like a like a wannabe James Franco type oh, figure. Right, right. And so I saw him standing at the bar at uh, Nobu and I and I was with like you know, some like clouded people and I thought I was feeling all cool and I was, you know, whatever. I'm walking, I like kind of caught his eyes. I walked by, I was, I like scoffed literally. I was like, <laughs> and that's definitely my biggest visceral regret for sure. Oh, and yeah. poor, he was just sitting alone. Like he, I could see it in his eyes. He was like down to talk or right. like down or whatever. He was just at the bar. Like no one was talking to him for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe poor people Fanny. have, yeah. <laughs> <Poor> <laughs> I know. but anyway, I saw him and I, I blew him off and that was my one chance to really like meld the relationship with him and see like, I was talking to somebody who saw a few of his unreleased films or short films at yeah. the Hollywood Cemetery or something, and he said it was crazy. Like one of them, he's singing operatically, like with the American flag blowing over him or oh, something. <laughs> like crazy, but he's so you, fucking. You, you he's so him, sick. I texted him. Did you get a response? Well, that was the whole. That was the whole conversation. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Oh, right. The fucking sign. Yeah. 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 But so it was. It was him. According to the, it was verified by his friends. So right. 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 I mean, he lives in Arizona now, and yeah. I. Yeah. He's. He's a genius. Hundred percent genius. A true artist. And he's the only person who's ever said no to coming on the pod. Really. Yeah. Damn. But he's considered. Yeah. He really. We I, we we have a respectful relationship. He just he said I can't go on anybody's blog. <laughs> I he said he'll never do an interview again. I was like, I I tried, this is our blog. I tried yeah. to get him. I, I, I did this photo shoot for Maxfield, the store in LA, and they're yeah. very reputable, whatever. Uh, I tried to get him for the shoot because they're friend. They know him because they have extensive clientele. And his response was for the shoot, which I ended up getting Rick Owens in. So I would much rather have Vincent Gallo. Though. No shade on Rick, but like I would rather yeah. Vincent Gallo. Yeah. But, no shade on Rick. No shade on Rick. <laughs> <laughs> mix, mix the raff with the Rick with the. No, we was mixing the rav with the rig with the margella and shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no shade on him, but uh, Vincent Gallo, Maxfield. Um, his, his response was, there's no way you could afford me. It's, it's true. Like, yeah. to be honest, like. That's why? always his reply. It's yeah. always some bullshit like that. Yeah. It's just, I don't understand what he's doing. He's such a talented man, and clearly he could make another seminal film. He could make, I believe he could make a magnum opus. At he the maybe stage has. He, yeah, exactly. He maybe has. Well, Chandler. Um, there's this, uh, there's this. Chandler's people. been in one of his movies lately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, it's funny. There's this, uh, there's this girl I know who lives in, uh, England, and uh, she was telling me. Because right now, all Vincent Gall- all we know that Vincent Gallo is doing other than making wanted posters for himself <laughs> is um, DMing every hot 18 yeah. to 19-year-old girl yeah. on the internet yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know, I, I know, like, at least seven girls I'm so, actually yeah, same, oh, we know, same, like, same. 30. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and he's just DMing them. Which, no, granted, he, he gave me the ultimate fucking uh, uh, a DM ever that you could just use, which is just, we should meet. No context. I've, been DM- I've DMed so many girls that just, like, we should meet. That's it. That's it. It's only worked once. It's only worked once. But uh, <laughs> I was talking to this girl and we were talking about Vincent Gallo or some shit. I'm not entirely sure how the, the, the conversation became this, but she told me that he contacted her and was like, listen, you're so beautiful. You make me want to come out of retirement and make another film. I want to make a film centered around you being a ballerina dancer and shit like that. But I'm, I don't know if I'm ready to make films again. And it's something and she's like, okay, just please put me in a movie. That'd, yeah. be, that'd be awesome. And da-da-da. So she's been waiting on waiting on him for like a year now to come out of retirement and make a movie uh, make a film with him so i guess he's really on the fence about making films but it's it, it's very greedy of me now that i think about it to be like why isn't he making a movie yeah. like it's really a specific headspace and a whole thing like oh he should be making but also, it's really mer- hard his merch that he dropped uh, in 2020, in- insane. Oh, yeah. it, I regret not buying the AOC T-shirt still. <laughs> we 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 tried to I know those uh, are fire. we we tried to buy uh, what we no and I tried to buy the George Floyd T-shirt just to have it and just frame it like not to wear it or anything. It was just the craziest thing I had ever seen in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. And I really want the the Dick Cheney parka. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's it's like it's like a Roth parka, right? Yeah, yeah. That one I love the Nancy Pelosi one. Yeah, the Nancy the, Pelosi uh, one. I mean, they're they're all just. Fucking Ooh, what if he it? shot that Dick Cheney parka in the front with like a twelve gauge and had like? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We all forget that Dick Cheney tried to murder a man on a hunting trip. Yeah, I I was just <laughs> thinking about how that's underrated. It's yeah. just fucking so underrated. It's like, 
I wonder if this is the same girl because I've also. I mean, it's probably just like a line that he. I'm gives, sure he but just like a, I need to make a movie. No, yeah, <laughs> what did I make? That's what. That's what. Like the no, classic director thing. Yeah, no one I were saying. Tell a hot no one I were talking about. He's like, yeah, he probably just says it to every girl to get laid and shit. Yeah. He said that to me. I would drop my pants for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'd fly. I'd let Vincent like, Gallo fuck you? me. I'd yeah. let Vincent Gallo fuck me. I'd go to therapy over that shit. Like, like, no, we should. That we should use his line on him. We should be like, we should meet. So true. So true. Wow. Listen, you guys are making a stick of coming out of retirement. <laughs> you really should be on my. We podcast. want to do another podcast episode with you, Vincent. Yeah, we're coming out of retirement for you. I'm just really on the fence about it. Okay, well, thank you guys, or thank you one of you for coming to our show last night. I know, was, I'm sorry, that was awesome. It's it. all good. I, I wouldn't come either. It's, I okay. will be at the next one whenever it is. August third. August third. Well, I, 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 I actually, I actually won't be there. No, he's, but, he's, he's <laughs> not going to be there. He's, he's out of town. But, but maybe there's things there, on the yeah, horizon. Maybe, I don't know if it will be announced by the time this comes out, but. There might be something in LA with there might be all uh, four of us involved. Huh? Yeah, there. There, there, there also is something on our end. We are we will be playing another show in Los Angeles, August twelfth. Um, our Austin show just got canceled today, which is oh, super damn. whack. Which is that we have a really good fan base there. We're supposed to play a show in Houston uh, on the seventh, but we I don't, might I don't, get murdered. We might get murdered by basically, the cartel. Basically, our lives have been put in danger if we go to Houston. I don't. Wanna, we're not going to go into it, but <laughs> we've been told not to go to Houston because bad things no, will we'll happen to us. No, we'll go into it. I don't care. But, we're, but we're going. <laughs> the, 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 you can't the, get into the, it? Dude, you set up the show just randomly. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't even want people to know yeah, who Okay, yeah, about. okay. Dude, <laughs> long story short, we got a pretty weird phone call, and we were like, I don't know if we should go to Houston. I don't, I'm not trying to get murdered by the cartel over a fucking help show. Like That's just, yeah. that's just ridiculous. But, uh... Yeah, we're playing a lot more shows now. It's our first shows back in like over two years. Uh, used to be a lot different live setup, and now we realize that we just want to be two dudes on stage with like synthesizers and drum machines. Way cooler. Um, playing a lot of more shows now, and we have a lot of really fucking ultra sick music coming out. That yeah. that I can say wholeheartedly. Not like I know we're kind of douchebags and we're arrogant, but we're very genuine. And the music we have coming out is. I would say it's the best electronic music that's happened like in the last fucking 15 years. Can and you can you it? can argue, you can be like, well, what about Arca or Sophie and all that stuff? But that stuff's not nearly as accessible as what we are doing. You know what I mean? I think that's what really separates yeah, everything. Is we're very, It's very sensible, it's very dancey, and it's very fun, and you feel like a cool person listening to it. Please send it to us. Yeah. Have we not? We not? I don't know. No. We, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll send yeah, it to the same SoundCloud. Uh, it'll be out in... Or we'll, we're playing it to, tonight at the party that we may both be attending. Oh, yeah. Oh. There we go. Oh, okay. Go Goots, is, Goots is letting us uh, oh. take over the ox cord. Okay, okay. so ox cord. Make sure we have a dongle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't have one. I Neither do I. No, but I was. I was even inspired from afar, just looking at Instagram stories last night. I was like, "Fuck." Yeah. It was. Oh, that's it was, a heavy burden. That's a big cross. I no, it was a, a thing that I thought the show it's last never night. happened before. Rarely do I see a show, and I'm like, "Wow, it's right. back." Well, what I. Something I always liked more about LA than New York was like if a band played at a party in LA, people will watch. Uh, if a band plays in a party setting in New York, people are like, I won't go. Yeah, let's move, let's go smoke a cigarette, let's go to a different place. I know, um, and I think there were a lot of people at the show, obviously, you know, most of them were your fans, so they were there to see the show, but there were people who this there at a party who like stayed and watched the show, which is, feels like a <clears> new <throat> thing that's coming back. And this is the first time I've seen it in New York energy. in a long time. So Thank it was, you. that was very fire inspiring. Fire energy. I mean, that, you're dressing the part too. It, it, that's a fun, okay. <laughs> I guess I guess I should tell. So, the, so are you guys? You, I guess I should tell the story. This is, this is the best part. This is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> All right. So I mean, okay. So to be honest, the, the the reason everybody wants to be a rock star, they want to be cool, is you know, what, what does everybody want? They want the Van Halen fucking lifestyle. They want to fucking they want to fuck the groupies. It's like a rock and roll drugs and all that stuff. F swear to God, five within five minutes after the show, I run in the green room. I'm drinking some vodka and I come out. You know, pretty. I would say like 7.5, 7.6. Pretty. You know, hot girl, clearly like a stripper or something. You know what I mean? Comes up to me and she's like, "Like that was so great. What are you in three out of three? And I'm like, "Are you? Did you come to my show? Like, you know what the help is?" She's like, "No, I just live down the street. Um, I just came because I was bored." And I'm like, "Oh, cool." She's like, "You know, th this and that." And finally, I, I'm not. I'm kissing her a little bit and stuff. And this is all within 30. 30 this this conversation is happening. With, this is a 30 second conversation, and she's like, "Give me all this shit." And I just like, I'm like, "Listen, dude." I have a nine inch dick 
I will, I will change your entire life. <laughs> like, I, I, can, I can verify he does. He does it's, indeed. It's crazy. Every, there's a lot of rumors. It's true. It's really funny. Don't be scared. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. No. When, when people found out in my hometown, I, girls would deny me sex because they were scared of my dick. It's retarded. I'm no, like, it's a liability. Very. So this girl's like, you're like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, well, let's go. Fuck. She's like, you want to fuck in the bathroom? Make sure. So within one minute of meeting this girl, she's like, fuck me in the bathroom. So, I, so all of our fans are waiting to get in these two little bathroom stalls. <laughs> I, I hop in there with her, have the craziest sex, arguably, in my entire life in this tiny little bathroom stall where people are pounding on the door and they're like, yo, I know you're having sex, but you got to gather. This girl squirts all over me in the bathroom. Oh and I'm like, I'm like, okay, crazy. That, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. And... It, because, you know, it's just something you see in pornography. Granted, never watch pornography. Don't watch porn. It's the word. It's invented by the devil, please. But it was like it was like a por porno. I'd never seen that shit. I'd seen that shit, like, since I was 16 on the internet. And I'm like, all right, we're, we're good. I'm going to go back out to the green room. I walk into the green room, and I'm like, <laughs> I walk in, I grab Noah. I'm like, I'm like, look at this. Look at this. Guess what this is. He's like, what? I'm like, this girl squirted on me in the bathroom. <laughs> and he, and wasn't, he wasn't just saying it to me. It was just no, I, you showed me you, too. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the green room knew. Yeah. Hey, everyone looked, and, he, and then he, he was like, look, somebody squirted on me. And then he proceeded to look over, and he's like, Coachella! <laughs> <laughs> Did, I that? Did I do that? that? That's awesome. That's really cool. I like myself more now. But uh, <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's our to crazy be honest, show. Uh, we are straight edge band. Though I do not drink Chandler's buffoonery uh, is balanced out by <laughs> it's, ba it's balanced out by by me. So I, I used to I used to party a lot. I used to do a lot of cocaine when I was like around my twenties when I used to work construction and uh, it was all I did was just drink fucking light beer. As you can see, there we light, go. Light beer. Uh, I used to drink cheap American light beer and just do cocaine every weekend for like. 48 hours straight and then just sleep all day Sunday and then go straight to work the next that's week. That's our shared path. And we both grew up doing construction. Yeah, that, that's how we really became uh, mm. became tight. Uh, but yeah, no, I've really toned down my partying a lot, but I still like, I ha still have this thing in me that like I can, I can just rip harder than fucking anybody and everyone's always like, oh, how are, how are you doing this? I remember when, when Noah and I had our first run of, uh, to anyone who knows this place, a Tenants of the Trees legendary oh, spot. Oh, yeah, big shit. Yes. Fucking shouts <laughs> yeah. of Tenants. Legendary I'm, spot. Well, Noah so and I, I'm bummed that's gone. That's Every time I've been in L.A., it was just like... Oh, uh, it's a shit show. Yeah, it's a shit show. But Noah I and I, I ran fan. that fucking location for a whole summer. No, it, it really. We, like it sounds like oh, these guys are staying there. It, we DJ like every Wednesday. And Luke, Luke, that's how we met Luke. Luke yeah, hired right, us yeah. to uh, to do it. But we ended up pulling. Big shots, Luke Hager. Big shots, Luke Hager. And we pulled a ton of people, and everybody in LA was coming. Like Machine Gun Kelly was like begging to get in, and <laughs> it, it, we we were running literally the hardest hard hottest party in LA for like not for, getting paid. We used to all, we we, we paid. would get paid. Okay. First off, I'll say it on record. Fuck the owner of tenants. Fuck Jason. We've tried. We tried super fucking hard. We told him, listen, man, what we're bringing to you, the cultural value we're bringing to your bar right now, you have celebrity. That's all you want. You just want clout. You want to be fuck. You want to be a cool fucking dude. And be like, oh, well, you know, I can't even really break even on the bar. You know, the problem is. And this dude, I swear to fucking God, this guy has an Instagram for his house. The yes, owner he has, has the yeah, X Machina house. X Machina house. <laughs> X Machina yeah, house. Yeah. This motherfucker wouldn't pay us fucking shit. Why are we talking about this right now what what, what do we what do we, we were talking about? about the show last night girl in the bathroom the girl the bathroom and then that led to i can't us. believe you had the best sex of your life last night I it was insane it was in, i've had i've like i'm not trying to brag that i've had a lot of sex like i've had i've had a lot of sex like as, <laughs> 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 you know what i mean like is any as any as any uh cool like heroin chic skinny handsome white di guy with like nice hair how much <laughs> how much sex they should be having i'm having less than i should be yeah. I, I, I will be honest because i did have a lot of issues when i was younger just i got i'll, I'll be honest i'll go dr phil right now with yeah, you guys man it. like i i had a lot of uh when I was in like second grade, third grade, I hung out with a lot of older people, like a kind of older brother figures. They were like four years older than me or so. And bro, they, they introduced me to pornography at a very young age and it worked my mind. I was like masturbating when like I was in like third grade and shit, like yeah. just crazy. It was, and it warped my whole entire mind of women, relationships, emotions, right. like uh, just sexuality in general. And uh, dude, they, I just went through up, up until about two years ago when I really fucking was like, I, why am I watching porn? That's just the lamest thing you can do as a dude is just watch another guy fuck a girl you wish you could fuck. That's just uh, blows my fucking mind if you look at it objectively. Yeah, it's, um, yeah I'm sure. So that really inhibited me, one, from just being able to approach women, having sex, all sorts of things like that, because 
if your hand can just make you feel everything and you can vicariously live like the greatest sexual experiences ever and not have to get over the hurdle of going up to the hot girl in the bar and talk to her and shit because yeah. at the end of the day you it, at the end of the day like somebody else is gonna go talk to that girl somebody else is gonna go make that move you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's fine you can sit in the fucking stands and i think porn is very synonymous with the a huge or not not synonymous that's that's a bad word to be honest I think it's a huge example of what's going on or what's really wrong with Western culture right now, which is just spectatorship. Yeah. Whereas like, like the, the idea of like, oh, I, I don't have to, I, I, don't, I would never go skydiving, but I'll watch a million videos of it on fucking YouTube. Or I don't want to go on that roller coaster, but I'll watch all the videos of the biggest mm. roller coaster in the world and shit like that. You know, yeah. sports and skateboarding and shit like that. Like, yo, if you just watch it, you know, video games and shit. And that's why porn's like the ultimate spectator sport happening right now where it's just, it, there's a reason that it's free. There's a reason you can just fucking get it anywhere. You can find any porn video ever. You don't need to pay for it. You just find it. And it's just, it's the ultimate example of just spectatorship destroying. Like, the there's world. a reason porn is free for the most part. You know, like yeah. there's a reason porn is free. There's a, there's an obvious reason. And I 100% agree with all that. I mean, I, I can't agree. I don't have the same experience, but I was notoriously. <laughs> everybody thinks I'm asexual. But I notoriously was celibate for six years. <laughs> Whoa. He's banging bitches now, though. What year, <laughs> year to what year? Like, how uh, old? Lit, either, I can't remember if I was had just turned 19 or if it was late 18. It was either, I think it was late 18 until last year. Wow. That's so I'm like, like 20, big years. 20, 26 now, so. Big years for fucking. It was fucking, it was pretty crazy. Like, I wasn't even having hella sex. But I, just like, started, I, didn't, I just started having very twisted dreams that weren't even sexual, but it was just like humiliating. Let's get real, let's get real. <laughs> man. I, I started humiliating dreams where it, a lot of them, for a while, it's so interesting. I'm not friends with her. She doesn't, I don't think she likes me at all. I shot her for praying. <laughs> I'm, like, for the, like a couple months ago. But I'm having these weird dreams about Petra Collins. Big and she wouldn't even touch me or anything <laughs> and I would just be so and I would like have a wet dream and her not even touching me I would just orgasm in real life and I'd wake up with like a wet dream and I would just be so humiliated and this would happen for like years <laughs> We found the title of the episode. Wet, <laughs> wet dreams with this Patrick Collins. This is, this, is this is when No and I were just fucking piss poor, fucked, living off Hollywood Boulevard at our se at our second apartment, and I was on a camping mat, like one of those like inflatable camp mats, like about yay thick. He was on just an air mattress, and we slept in the same room because we were we're just fucking just nice people, and we were like, all right, Curtis, you can get the master room with the bathroom. And our stuff. our author. Our author friend Curtis Eggleston, who's honestly you guys are really fuck with. He's really sick. Sorry. I'm gonna send you his debut novel. It's coming out. I just did the uh, uh, the album, the cover artwork for it. Uh, it's really sick. It's being published by Expat Literature. Oh, yeah. If you guys know that, yeah. yeah. And they're really hyped about him. And it's really sick. It's like it's incredible. Very it's incredible. generational. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not just saying that because Chandler and I are main characters in it, not by name, but yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, I'll, I'll tell you, you, everybody listening, whatever, should, should read that when it comes out. It's coming out at the end of August. It's really sick. He, he's literally like the best young writer. No, he, right now. It, it, so, he really is. No, no one's on his level. No, not, no, not, not even he, close. He's, and he's very, he's, very, he's very funny, very cheeky, very smart, very handsome, blonde. Huge douchebag. Yeah. Huge piece of shit. <laughs> like, literally, like, I love the dude to death. He's a fucking piece of shit, though. And he's the whole reason that uh, he put me onto a lot of good books and... There's been times when he's like, oh, you know the reason you did, 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 you know, but I'm like, I, I will say here on the record, on video record, my obsession for, of Moby Dick comes from Curtis Eggleston, so I, I appreciate that. But uh, as I was saying, the camping mats and the air mattress, this dude was, we, we were sharing a room. We were just, life fucking sucks. And it took me, it was, it, it was about, oh, after two years after that, that's when I found out about these Petra Collins, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> dreams where he was just busting loads, like, six feet away from me on an air <laughs> every, every night. Damn, and he was like, dude. yeah, I'm having wet dreams all the time. I have like, no idea how humiliating it was. I wasn't even sexually, like, attracted to her. It was just, I mean, I guess I was on some level, but it was just this different... She was like a deity in my dreams yeah, almost. Right. It was yeah. For some reason, she took she on just, some She was like observing it, and it was horrible. But then after that, I, 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 I grew this like weird, almost fetish, fetish, fetishization of yeah. her, but not even like a sexual way. And it's crazy that she may end up hearing this. Oh, uh, yeah. Petra's listening. No, I, yeah, I shot her, and I, I shot her, and she definitely didn't fuck with me. She definitely did not like me. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. At this you point. might be I, projecting, though. You might, it might just be like... Maybe, memories of your dreams. Maybe your, subconscious. Yeah, exactly. She's yeah, going to listen to it when she sees the title of the episode. <laughs> I, I, did, 
You guys do that to me. I would actually, <laughs> no, 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 I would no. actually, be, I'd actually be like, that's sick. But, <laughs> but, but uh, sick. That, that kept happening. That kept happening to me. And oh man, I was doing bad things. And I would stay out all night with these girls and never make moves. And it was just a horrible, horrible lifestyle. Because I mean, I'm very Catholic. Like my family's very Catholic, and you know, premarital sex was like a mortal sin. And I just, and I have other issues. I don't really know what's going on, and I just couldn't do it. So six years. And people would be like, bro, you have real issues. <laughs> I do, and I just, I sort of been getting over them. It, com it comes to the point, though, um, where I started being repulsed by myself. It's weird. I think that Freud was more right than we think. Because how many people yeah. do we know that, yeah. like, look, there's a lot of incels out there, but incels are generally categorized as guys who are like, you know, on the internet, like, you know, like they're ugly or whatever it might be. But I'm like, I'm, I know I'm not ugly. I'm not that hot either, but I'm like moderately attractive and I, you know, like roll with the right people and I'm in the right culture or whatever. So getting laid shouldn't be that hard, you know, and it shouldn't be a struggle. So, um, man, I'm losing my track of thought. And I sound, and I sound But psychopathic. you are fucking no. Uh, I mean, I guess, but... <laughs> The this, this guy is <laughs> the Freudian thing. Why was Freud right? Freud. What was you said like the guilt, being Catholic disgusted guilt, with, disgusted yourself. with, with yourself. yourself. Oh yeah, I would, I would, I would literally like pee, and I would be disgusted, like, and I would not want anybody to know that I was peeing because I just Whoa. felt so repulsed by my body. It was crazy, and it was literally be just because of whatever sexual. It was like sexual dysphoria, not gender. It was like this yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was soup, very weird. No. It was honestly very difficult, and I mean, I'm still struggling with a lot of things that aren't really sexual, but it's, that's like a little better now. But no, I've it, I you know, I lost my virginity when I was 20, yeah. Yeah. Uh, voluntarily because of some other. Yeah, I was raised Catholic. It was definitely some weird guilt thing. It just freaked me out for some how, reason. How did, I wanted to. So how was it like when you kind of did it? It, it was as soon as you do it, it was like not a big deal. Yeah, yeah of course. I was there, um, right? No, you were there. Yeah, but I was around. Oh, you were around. Yeah. yeah. But um, but no, yeah, it was another weird thing where it was like everyone was like, "Dude, what's your problem?" How old okay. you? How old uh, you when you when you lost your virginity? How old you? Fifteen. Just, is everyone just banging girls in teenage? I lost my virginity when I was uh, eighteen. Yeah. yeah. But I was re I was super nervous about all that. I was like, because I was watching hella fucking porn. I was right, all right, fucked right, up. Right. I was all yeah. fucked up. Yeah, and, I don't uh, know what my thing was. I was dating all like I would go on dates when I was like eighteen, nineteen. I would like you know I wasn't in Sally. I wasn't shy even. Did you not seal the deal? Were you kissing these bitches? No, it just for some reason it freaked me out on some weird shit that I can't explain. Just like you were saying. Yeah. He was kissing these bitches. I definitely was. I definitely was. You're kissing but. bitches. Uh, that's, that's the title. Uh. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was super nervous about everything. And that was when, yeah. uh, I, I don't think I mentioned, so the whole thing with me having a large dick, whatever, uh, what, was it got, let's, it got, let's bring that up again. <laughs> well, no, this, this, is a, this is a good story about yeah. my virginity. Oh, yeah. that is a good story. Um, well, so what happened was is, is a photo got leaked because my outlet was, it was all through the internet. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It was through internet pornography. And then just yeah. like, I was attractive. So I had hella girls off like Twitter and stuff who would like sex me and shit. Like I was really dishing out dick pics. <laughs> I, was, like, <laughs> I was like 18 to like, to, like sevens across the country and shit like that. Like it was, it was wild. <laughs> so I had all these pictures of like my full blown erection and shit on my phone. And my homie was like, like show me the photo right now. Like we were just hammered. And I'm like, yeah, sure. He sent it out. Every single person in my hometown got this photo. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? So every, this was when I was 17, I believe. So everybody had this photo of my dick. And that's, uh, that's when girls were just, they were like, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna have sex with you. Like, I'm, that's, you're ridiculous. That's crazy. These girls had never seen anything like that. So it, so it wasn't until I was 18 that I lost my virginity. I lost my virginity in a three way with the two, like, weirdest art hoes in my high school. Like, the weirdest fucking girls. It was, it, it, was, it was rough, man. It was cool. On the catty corner spectrum, I lost my virginity on the 9-11 anniversary, and the girl just cried, like, and, I, and, then, and then I went and slept in my car afterwards. <laughs> Disintegration loops is playing in the to background. To clarify, she, cri she cried because her father died in 9-11. He was a firefighter. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Are we going to talk about the 9-11 hologram planes, or is that, like, too late? Are you guys going to get demonetized? <laughs> we, 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 can't, we can't go into that. We can head to the park now if you want to get your ticket signed. You can see the one tower from here. <laughs> I, ca I can. Well, that's crazy. I live two blocks from the, the pool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's, a it's a beautiful interior. I do like it quite a bit. But yeah. It doesn't change the fact that, you know, the things happen that, you know, it's all <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's plug all your shit real quick before we wrap. Okay, so basically, you knowing Dylan and and myself, uh, we are in a band called The Help. Uh, 
definitely undoubtedly the coolest band happening in the world right now. I, I firmly believe that. I was skeptical, but I think you're right. <laughs> it's all I of, saw all, the stories, bro. I was yeah. like, yeah, all, they, maybe all, they are the cool. It was, no, you know what it was? I think I was resistant because I was like, they're cooler than us. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And then, and then I heard in the green room, they were like, he was like, they think we're cool, and I was like, yeah. No, I, I'm told, I, I, for I talked to homeboy for like a fucking yeah, like thirty minutes. I was like, dude, you guys are so sick. Yeah, I've like, been, like, I've, I've been like afraid of you guys. I'm like afraid to DM you. I'm like, oh fuck. Was that was that footage of you guys <laughs> DJing in the cowboy hats and the ski mask? I was like, these guys might be like too cool. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, no, for the past month, I've been like, so what do you think of like that? Like to random people, be like, what do you think of like the help? I'm like, no, like, Dylan, horrible. And shit. Like, what do you think of these guys? Like, I've been here. And everyone's lot. always like, they're they're sick, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're, they're, People in our orbit. I've been sizing you up for a month. That's crazy because a lot of people. (laughs) (laughs) Now that I hear you have this big dick, I'm like, and I see these Instagram stories, I'm like, all right, they win. (laughs) (laughs) The funny thing is, a lot of people in LA, I I mean, maybe, we've just heard that a lot of people don't like us in LA because. I mean, I've had a horrible eating disorder for years, but I and uh, so oh, yeah, I of course this. I'm going to like talk shit about fat people all the time, and yeah. like, I always think I'm fat. I have an it doesn't matter, but <laughs> so people are like, oh, you're you're this and you're that, and like Chandler's a crazy guy and he's saying crazy stuff, and you know, it's a lot. Of, I think a, I, I think a lot of people are like hesitant to like us in LA, but I'm glad the New York sentiment might be. No, the mythos possible. that yeah. follows both of you is like what I've tried to cultivate for cool. decades yeah, yeah, plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, incredible. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you, your guys' mythos is far superior to ours <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> no, 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 no. Before, before we plug all our stuff no the, what, what he's what uh what he was going off of is this one girl we're friends with uh uh genesis shout shout out genesis crazy girl total e-girl legend um she came to us she was like yeah a lot of those people at the party didn't like you guys i was like why and she's like she's like well it's because like what you guys say and i'm like what are we saying they're like yeah. they think we're like racist or something and she's like no just like all your like fat phobic stuff we're like oh Fuck off! Like, I don't give a shit. Like, what, 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 what did you say the other day when we, we were uh, we were hanging out? You were like, you were like, dude, if I'm gonna get canceled for being fat phobic, then fuck it, I don't care. <laughs> Honestly, I don't mind. I just think that being, I okay, I'm not. I won't do that. <laughs> But I'm glad the New York sentiment is generally positive. I mean, you That's started the sense. podcast talking about shooting a 16 millimeter movie in the Chateau Marmont with Lucas and Bob. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like you win, you won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please yeah. get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out, Luca. Yeah, uh, shout out. Big shout out, Lucas Bob. We'd love to have him on. So the hell? I, th- I think you come on. Honestly, I'll, yeah. I'll talk. To him. And also, that movie. I'm, we're down to run the. the yeah, the let's, no, no, let's let, we'll, we'll let's it. do it. Um. So yeah, no one, no one. I have uh, worked on the help intensively for the last few years and we've finally come to a spot where we really understand how to craft the music we want how to portray ourselves and it's not even portraying ourselves it's just realizing that we don't need any gimmicks we're just right. cool, two cool dudes um our new music coming out is is far spirit anything else that's been released in the last 15 years it's sensible it feels timeless it feels like as you described it feels like you went into an attic and you opened a chest and you just found this old record and you blew the dust off it and you put it on you're like whoa this, what is this what is this what my grandpa was listening to um <laughs> we're releasing a lot of music we're playing a lot of shows we're, we have some more uh fall show dates that haven't been announced yet that we'll be doing around october we'll be back here again and uh, yeah, a few more music videos coming out, and we have a new project called Enemy that comes out in September. And uh, yeah, what, what as if that doing? wasn't enough, uh, if anybody wants to put me in a group show, uh, <laughs> a, 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 a highly reputable group show with an amazing curator, <laughs> I'm available. I, uh... also, also, anyone that watches this, because I do, I do get DMs about this stuff. Tony, come to this city, come to this city. If you want the help to play live anywhere, just fly us wherever you want us to play. Put us in a hotel and just pay us like a thousand bucks. That's it. That really is the key. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand bucks hotel room for it. Anybody will. Yeah, but I, I would. I would actually for a decent hotel room. I would even be flexible on on the on rate. Pay. Yeah. yeah. You give us a fucking Marriott suite. Yeah. Double tree Marriott. Don't Hilton. pay us. Yeah. yeah. Don't pay it. Yeah, <laughs> Couple wheels of sixteen in the chateau. Yeah. And let, let me just eat all the M and M's that are in the hotel room and we'll call it good, dude. <laughs> and for yeah. anyone listening, book them. It's a great show. I was there last night. Uh, Thank you for saying that. You should bring it to your city. Yeah, I do. I do appreciate that. I've, I've, we've yeah, we've worked sure. tirelessly for like for, literally, man. For the last year, I've spent eight hours a day just trying to learn how to like yeah, totally. make a sound cool live. Like, and, yeah, he was gushing. And, and I, and I, I, I even now, I still think it all sucks. I'm still like, it has to be better. It has to be better. It has to be cleaner. But that's healthy, though. Of course, man. Don't it's, get it's like uh, it's like what Matthew McConaughey said when he was accepted. <laughs> My favorite speech by any any fucking celebrity, honestly. Um, I think it was. Uh, Academy Awards, and they go, they go. Uh, Matthew McConaughey has a fucking Oscar in his hand and shit, and he's like, you know, he's up there, he's looking beautiful, and he goes, uh, 
They go, you know, when I was when I was 15, they asked me to say, Who, who's your hero, Matthew? Who's your hero? And I said, me and me, me when I'm 25. <laughs> and I and I got 25 to ask me again. They said, who's your hero, Matthew? And I said, me when I'm 35. And 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 they said, well, why are you not your hero now? And I I told them, I said, my hero is always me in 10 years, so I can never quite reach it. And that's how I keep becoming a better person because I never will be my hero. I'm always trying to be my hero. My hero is always me in the future. And I was like, that is <laughs> that's true. That's man. Yeah. That, is, like, that is a fact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is life. That is life right there. God bless Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Uh, stream uh, stream our shit so we don't aren't poor. Uh, it's really cool. Thank you guys all for right, thank all right, thank you guys for right, having us on. Right, right, right. <laughs> you guys are the shit. Thanks. Big shout. Big shout. It's been great Chandler. interviewing ourselves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> people are gonna hate you for this one. You guys should definitely put the, this is the only one that goes on YouTube and leave the comments. Yeah, this out. one's people, public. Yeah. Pe- people are gonna people are gonna be like these guys are such. Like whatever explicative you want to use, they're gonna hate us. For sure. Wait till you see the supercut. Yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right. Peace. All right. Man. Later, guys. Peace.